goodness with face, pat, and tiz. I'm glad you caught it this time. Nope. I got, I was nope, nope, slacking. Nope. I caught it though. This God is with us. God is with us. And since he is, I started one more time with, what's up guys? Welcome to the podcast. Yeah. A show with three <laughs> friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I am one third of the partners. Your boy Tiz. And I'm along with other third of the partners just got vax pat. Yeah, and I'm a little slow, so y'all bear with me this episode. And I'm along with dramatic pause. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? It's your boy facing the police. <laughs> I'm somewhere in the middle of this race, but I'm pushing my out the way so I can get ahead of there. Well, that's just fine, bro. Uh, you are. Where are you supposed to be, man? Um, how you fellas doing this week, guys? I'm copacetic, but I'm making it to be better day by day. So, right on, yeah. right on. I'll let about you know you, by the end of the week. I'll let you know by the end of the week. I'm all wonky right now. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you wonky, oh, yeah. man? Why you won't? Um, all right. So I might as well put in my story. So um, I finally decided to go get the vaccine. Okay. And really, really the only reason I got it was main is because the job is required now. I mean, I don't work in a, I work from home, but they say just in case something happens with my computer, which in the case of me, my computer always go through something all the time. I may have to go in the office, so it required me to get vaxxed or whatever. So, yeah. Gotcha. Um, so, so far, uh, and it really, um, I really didn't even feel it when they stuck me, when they stuck me. And I say when they stuck me, but I actually went to... Uh, the place my uh, stepdad works at, and he was the one that actually gave me the vax, so I felt a lot better about it because it's somebody I know That's that actually gave me the vax. And not that many people has have that um, opportunity, I guess you would say, whatever, at least, you know, I, I don't got some random, I have somebody that I feel comfortable with vaxing me, so yeah. So, yeah, um, I had to take, a, you know, some Tylenol or whatever when I got mm-hmm. home because that's what he told me to do. Take like a Tylenol or something. A like... Tylenol? Tylenol? Yeah. <laughs> tylenol. I've never heard it called that in my life. A Tylenol. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Not the shorts, but the Tylenol. <laughs> hey, y'all don't know. I'm pretty sure it's Tylenol, but we're going to let it slide. Yeah, it still don't sound right when I say it like that. So I want to say that. Right on. You anyway, said how you know it, man. I got a cousin that says I, Palo instead of Pillow, so I get it. I'm country, but I don't know if I'm that country. I say Pillow. But yeah, um, so um, he just said that. So if I have like any pain or whatever, it's already stuck in me. He said, I'll take one before I go to sleep. And to tell you the truth, I'm like halfway sleepy already. <laughs> right on, <laughs> right on. Well, hopefully you will be you will make it through this episode, and you won't pull a me or a face and uh, nod off at some point. So, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, we got Wonky yeah. Pat tonight, folks. Wonky Pat. All right. And how about you, my brethren? How are you doing this week? Uh, I guess that takes us into our first topic that we'll kick it off with. Um, so it's been a long week. Um. Uh, Squad people will probably notice that it's been a few less videos this week. Um, Yeah. um, So we always talk about mental health on here and uh, the importance of uh, saying when you're not okay, using supports and reaching out for resources. So um, this past week, 
at my job. Um, I basically had a mental break. Um, I don't know whether you would call it a full psychotic break or anything, but I definitely had a breakdown of sorts. Um, found out some interesting news. Um, not really ready to share that or put that out there, but uh, found out some interesting news that affects my family. But for some reason, that news, <sighs> whereas normally I would have, I guess, kind of just dealt with it. Um, for some reason, it made every issue that I've experienced in the past 30 odd years, man, just kind of flood at one time. Um, yeah, I thought about cousins' deaths that I blame myself for. Um, I thought about like my childhood and things I missed out on. Um, Thought about how this news was going to affect my family and the immediate. I thought about what am I to blame? Like I had a bunch of guilt feeling. Like it was just crazy. Um, basically broke down in front of everybody at my job. Um, couldn't breathe. Um, from what I've heard people describe a panic attack as, I guess that would be the closest thing that I can correlate it to. Um, so got a taken out of work. Um, yeah. And basically, um, from there, I went and, went and saw a psychiatrist and got diagnosed, um, basically just to kind of get a roadmap as to what I need to do, because I don't know. Um, for me, I've always been a person that prided myself on being very uh, mentally and emotionally in control. Um, when I was angry, I wanted to be angry. Um, when I was sad, I kind of was allowing myself to be that way or so I thought, um, thought I was okay, but apparently I was not. And apparently I've been just kind of masking and suppressing feelings, thinking that it was me actually coping. Um, yeah, um, for the first time I felt out of control. So I went to a psychiatrist, got diagnosed, and basically I have anxiety disorder and I have severe depression. Um, luckily it's not of the like manic or suicidal, but I definitely do have strong withdrawal tendencies. And uh, I thought about like checking out of society several times, like just kind of running away and just hiding from everything. Um, yeah, and it's weird because I'm usually the goofy one or the one that's kind of like cracking jokes, but I guess that's kind of like been my way of like acting like things okay. were okay, and it really wasn't. Um, so, yeah. So I've been put on some uh, anxiety and depression meds. Um, so I've been dealing with the physical effects of that. They don't really do much for me emotionally or mentally for the next week or so, two weeks, they said it takes a week or two to kind of actually like fully level hormone levels out and stuff in my system and kind of get me to that place where I actually feel different. Um, but I definitely got um, grief counseling that I ha have been mandated and I have a uh, therapy that has been mandated. So I'll be starting that Thursday. Um, but yeah, man, that's how I'm doing, man. I'm not okay, but I'm okay to say I'm not okay. Um, right now I'm just kind of in a, I don't know. That psychiatrist appointment was like really, really like eye opening. It kind of brought up a lot of shit that I ain't talked about or thought about or dealt with since I was maybe... 1920 at best. Um, so emotionally raw pause is kind of how I feel right now, like just real drained there. Um, been really just trying to maintain, kind of like trying to keep things out of the way of the little man so he don't get affected by it and don't throw him off. Um, been trying to like, you know, deal with the news I actually got with the wife, you know, and support her through it as best as I can in my state. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at, man. So pause squad, if y'all don't see videos as often for the next few weeks or 
whatever, man. Um, just know it's because I'm I, I, I'm t- I'm taking a mental health day, or I'm just kind of getting shit together, or I have an appointment for something or something. Or the meds got me a little off, but yeah. Um, it is weird saying it out loud, I guess, because uh, like I said, I've always been the in control guy, the guy that like kind of a lot of people in my family and like my closest circles like kind of come to for advice around shit like this. So like to be the one that's <laughs> on fucking meds and shit and having to see, you know, a doctor more, not because I want to, but because it's actually been prescribed. It's kind of weird. So I'm just kind of dealing with that and what that looks like for me. Um, yeah, man, that's where I'm at. I'm not okay, but I'm at least okay to say I'm not okay. Yeah. Not the first step to getting okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, man. So uh, that's where shit is with that. Um, I've been trying to, like, you know, kind of find my little – place of normalcy and some things. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. It's weird as hell, man. It's been a weird, scary-ass week. Um, like, right now, my fucking chest is pounding. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's how I'm doing. A lot braver than a lot of months, a lot of people. You know, a lot of people keep that to themselves. And I think that at this time, it's probably best that you vent that out because you haven't had a chance to vent it out yet. Like, more often you vent it out, the, the more you feel relieved. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, but yeah. Yep. A lot, a lot stronger than you think you are, man. <laughs> That's the hard part, man. It's like trying to get back to the place where you actually feel that way. Like, like I, I used to feel that way. Mm-hmm. I hear people saying it. You know what I mean? So it's just actually getting to a place where I can actually, like, believe that shit again. Because I don't see it, bro. Like, shit feel out of control right now, bro. And I hate that shit, but... It's where I'm at, so it is what it is, man. But I will tell you that uh, the good thing is this podcast actually helps. Um, Part of my regimen from the psychiatrist is, like, I got to start avoiding withdrawing. Like, I have to actually work my social skills because, like, one of the things I realized is, like, I talk to people about what's going on. Like, I say what's going on but I don't always know how to really express how I really feel how how to even really interpret how I feel truly about it and I think that's part of the problem like I I just throw labels around but I don't really know if that's what I'm really feeling like you know sometimes I'll be like you know I'm just frustrated but maybe I am actually really pissed off about it maybe I'm you know shit like that so like I I think a big part of this process is like being more social and like, cause you know, I'm an introvert anyway. And then on top of that, like outside of talking to y'all, like I have a habit of like withdrawing from the few friends I do have down here. And like the coworkers I got that actually be trying to, you know, create those social ties. I'll like kind of like shy away from it. So like, I know it's me, man. Like I even shy away from my wife a lot, man. Like I'll, going to my little man cave and kind of just hide away in video games or editing or working on something for the pod or everything, but actually having real valuable social interactions. Like I interact more in chat rooms than I do in real life. You know what I mean? With people. So like, I feel like that's part of the problem and I definitely understand why I'm being prescribed that. So the good thing is that I get to still meet with y'all and you know what I mean? It just pushes me to actually talk to y'all more and like actually like try to figure out how I feel about shit. So yeah, bros. That's where we at this week, champs. 
God damn it. But what I ain't about oh, to do, man, I ain't about to be on his bitch crying and shit today. So, so far, I held that shit together. I ain't about to be like one of these boohoo ass banger niggas. No, nah, fuck that shit. Not in front of nah, me. But um, what I will say is, I've definitely done a lot more crying in the past week than I've done in my entire life. So, uh, definitely have had to stay hydrated. You know, and uh, yeah, man. To everybody out there who may be dealing with shit and you feel like weird and you feel like shit is off, don't do like I do and just keep acting like shit okay. Don't try to work through it or don't try to like, oh, I'll just keep on, you know, working out or I'll just keep on eating or I'll just keep on smoking or drinking or whatever it is that you do that allows you to run away from shit that's actually happening to you man like don't like stop go get help don't be afraid of being on medicine man like don't be afraid of whatever help you need to be okay man like start that process and like get that shit because it was embarrassing as hell to like break down in front of my co-workers and shit and if I can save somebody else that embarrassment and that uh, just that not knowing what's wrong with you, but knowing that something's wrong. You know what I mean? Um, like, I don't heard Padawan talk about his struggles with anxiety and Face talk about his struggles with anxiety, but, like, shit that I was attributing to, like, PTSD or, like, just, oh, you know, it's just the pandemic or whatever. Like, this shit is real life. Like, I actually, there's something going on there. It's... it's it's a le- legit, le- legitimate diagnosis there. So, like, the worst part is not knowing and just going through life thinking there's something wrong with you. It's better to know, like, okay, so this is what I'm going through. I'm not experiencing something. I'm not, like, losing my mind. I'm actually, like, I just need to do these things. So get help. If you need to talk about it, you know what I mean, hit us up in the inbox. I'll, I'll reach back out to you, man, like. I'll share my resources with you so that you can get whatever help you need as well. And uh, yeah, man. Hope my shit helps somebody else. Man. We can move on from there. I don't know. But yeah. This, um, I, I think this is a good thing. I think men need to have more talks like this because we don't have talks like this. We, we're we're taught to keep everything in and in our years of studies now nowadays or modern studies that's learned that that method is what's killing us so right you know what i'm saying like i think i think this is good so men in general will be more comfortable with actually feeling comfortable expressing how they feel right. pretty much i hope it helps somebody and if it don't you know I don't know. I feel like at least I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and at least doing what I was told and talking about it and getting it off my chest and, you know. On on some real shit, on some real shit, Tess, this actually, I don't want to say you going through, I wouldn't wish this on nobody, but, like, I've had those moments where I felt like my chest is pounded. I don't know what's going on and I'm having a headache and I'm thinking everything that I've got done wrong in life over and over going in my head. I felt yeah, that man. before. Yeah, man. And it's and to and to be God rough, honest man. with you, like the hardest thing about it is you feel like you're the only one that goes through this. You feel like there's something else wrong with you, but you're not the only one, man. And yeah. and I, I it, it gives me a it makes me feel a lot better about all right. I'm not just weak. No, away. bro. You're just like me, man. And that's all right. Um, mm. I definitely, you know, the creative in me. I definitely want to do some type of content or segment weekly, like, or bi-weekly, or whatever, like, where we, like, add in, like, some type of mental health check-in on each other and, like, have these talks about, like, how we feeling and, like, what's going on emotionally, like, that week or mentally that week, like, mm. 
Cause I feel like you're right. We don't talk about it. Like we've talked about it, but we ha- we talked around it. Like we had, we didn't actually like dig into like, yo, know, how am I actually doing this week? Am I okay? Like I know I'm saying mm-hmm. I'm okay, in it, but like, am I actually okay? Like we so, so um, we so programmed, we so programmed to just say that. So, cause we don't want I, right, I don't want my petty problems to be somebody else's burden, or yep. I don't want people to be thinking or worrying about me or whatever when there's something that I know I got to overcome anyway. That's that's how I feel about that. And I know if I feel about that, man, somebody else feels the same way. Yeah, man. Um, so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and move on just because. Uh, I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but somebody out there needs to talk. Hit me up. I'll listen. The partners podcast at gmail.com. I'll listen. So yeah. So that's how I'm doing this week. Um, and because of that, it brings me great pleasure to actually go into this next uh topic so that I can actually like get some joy back, get kind of get back on track and not derail this show with my fucking uh depression problems um so that takes me into the positive black news the good shit that black people are doing experiencing um receiving just going through this week the good shit the happy shit the joyful stuff um and my first story comes to us from news1.com um, Janelle Monet's new song is drawing attention to black girls and women who've been killed by police. Um, so ahead of International Daughters Day on September 26th, Janelle Monet recently released a 17-minute long collaborative tribute song called Say Her Name in honor of 61 black women and girls from ages 7 to 93 who've lost their lives due to police violence. Say Her Name follows up on Monet's previous collaborative protest anthem, 2015's Hell You Talking About. While speaking with people, the musician explained that she wanted the latest project to bring more awareness to victim stories that mainstream media hasn't covered. Also, she wanted to allow their families an opportunity to be able to hear people sharing their stories about their daughters as the human beings they were and as the daughters they were. So salute to Queen Janelle Monet for providing um, that platform for awareness and just kind of reminding people of, you know, not only that we've had a lot of kings murdered at the hands of um, police brutality over the past few years, um, we've definitely had a lot of queens that we've lost along the way as well. And a lot of times those queens get overlooked. So salute to Janelle Monet for bringing awareness to that. And, you know, yeah, man, just spreading light onto that. Um, yeah. Again, the name of the song is Say Her Name. So if you can support that, please go out and check that out. Um, check out the video on YouTube, you know, all that good stuff. But just, you know, put some support behind this. This is a good look. For the second story of the night. On the positive Black news, Representative Karen Bass could be gearing up for a mayoral one. Sources say the California Congresswoman is considering a run for mayor of Los Angeles. California Democratic Representative Karen Bass is gearing up to run for mayor of Los Angeles. At least that's what sources close to the Congresswoman are saying. The 67-year-old politician was named as a potential vice presidential running mate to presidential for, to President Biden during the 2020 elections. And now Bass's name is being mentioned as part of the field competing for a chance to replace the city's current mayor, current mayor Eric Garcetti, Car- Gar- Gar- Garcetti, one of the two, who is term limited. So um, salute to this queen. Hopefully she gets a chance to actually, you know, run for mayor of Los Angeles. Um, California has been doing a lot of really progressive things um, in the area of race relations. Um, California. And we've been highlighting, 
I mean that they know how to party. So hopefully this <laughs> leads to some even more pro- progress and reform in the city of Los Angeles and California as a whole. So salute to the queen, Representative salute. Karen Bass. Salute, queen. 21 gun salute. I mean that. Big salute. And in this next story, um, just get a real good expression of uh, black manhood at its finest. Um, so yeah, this next story comes to us from blacknews.com and this has us looking at a man who proposes to adopt his two stepdaughters while getting married to their mom. So in a heartfelt moment at a wedding in Detroit, Michigan, the groom, Dantes Williams, proposed to the two daughters of his bride asking if he could adopt them. And it was captured in a video that has since gone viral on Instagram. Um, I never knew you really do become a man when you have children, said Williams, who was 33 years old. Having someone to teach, protect, provide for them, discipline them, learn from them, and support them. For all these reasons, you've helped me become a better person. The moment brought tears of joy to the two girls, nine-year-old Abigail and eight-year-old Natalie, as Williams got on his knee to accept his proposal to become their legal father. He said, I know that I'm a father figure to you both. It happened as Williams was getting married to the girl's mother, Michelle Burton, who was 26 years old. The couple who met through the Dayton website, Plenty of Fish, has been together for seven years. Williams has been in the girls' lives since they were one and two years old. So salute to this king, man, Dantez Williams, um, for stepping up and stepping out and just showing what black manhood and fatherhood really looks like out here. Um, I feel like that can get overlooked at times, but we got some real kings out here doing big things. And salute to Dantez Williams. Big up, Dante. Also, single people, listen to that story. You can't meet your soulmate off plenty of fish. So that's still an option out there. Online dating does work. Um, there are some successful relationships that have got their start there. And um, I think any relationship just goes into like what you're willing to put into it, how much work you're willing to do. Yeah, and, right. like, that's it. The two people willing to grind. Like it's a constant job. You're constantly relearning each other. You're constant, constantly adding new things to the pot, taking new things out of it. And, Reestablish the things, but if you're willing to do it, it's a beautiful thing. And um, I definitely know this past week has definitely made me appreciate my significant other, my spouse, my queen, um, a lot more. Um, because this would have been yeah. even scarier to go through alone. Um, so yeah, man. Um, yeah. shout out to Dantes Williams for stepping up and then taking that fatherhood role too. A lot of men um want to date the mom, but don't want to accept the responsibility that comes with what happens when you and the mom now are a relationship and she has children. And, you know, at some point, whether you step up to be their stepfather, whether you step up to do whatever, if you're dealing with her, you're going to have to take a role in that child's life. You're going to have to insert yourself in that way at some point. So love the fact that he did it willingly and just been doing it on, on his own. And I love Kings that are doing this out here because it, continues to shatter that stereotype that black men are not stepping up and doing it and being fathers. And uh, shout, shout out to my stepdad because he did the same thing. Indeed. <laughs> Very much so. Indeed, man. Yeah. Stepdads matter, yeah. yo. And if, if you're on plenty of fish, um, man, if 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 you say hi and they immediately say hi, um, you just keep talking to make sure that's not a robot because you don't want to be out here being a stepdad to a robot. Yeah, you will end up sending money over there to China somewhere to some princess because oh. she, you know, and with the we're gonna start getting, getting a bunch of robo calls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, your warranty on your car gonna be messed up, and everybody gonna need to give you one. Um. So yeah, mm-hmm. stay away from that part. But uh, it is an option. But mm-hmm. leave all options out there if you're really out there looking for love. It is, it is possible to find. In the craziest of places. So, yeah. Um, this next story comes to us again from blacknews.com. Um, a children's book author is now crowned 
the first black Miss Preteen International. So Ooh. Morgan E. Taylor popped on the scene when she was five years old as the co-author of Daddy's Little Princess, a nonfiction children's book that introduces real princesses of color from around the world. Now the preteen who envisioned being a princess is a queen. On Wednesday, July 28, 2021, Morgan competed as Miss Preteen Tar Heel State for the international title and won. Crowned Miss Preteen International in Kingsport, Tennessee, she is the first Black preteen to achieve this honor. It is mm. such an honor to represent preteens everywhere and encourage young people to read, said Morgan. My goal is to be authentic and to be a positive role model. So as Miss Preteen International, the 12-year-old rising eighth grader now moves from highlighting positive role models to being one herself. So salute to her, man. Um, that is huge. Mm -hmm. um, really dope to see a young queen who's already, like, taking her life by the horns and just kind of, like, setting her own path and really going for what she know and being an example to other young people. Um because at the end of the day, man, you know, as old as older people, you know, and just developmentally, we know that young people, they, at a certain age, especially at that age, they start to get their cues from each other more than us. Like what we say really yeah. don't have as much of an effect as to what other kids and what other people their age are into. So shout out to her, man, for just doing that. And um, big for preteens everywhere, man. Like, I think that's super dope. Really, really, really huge shout out to that little queen. Cool. Um, and our final story for this week. Another queen making big, doing big things out here. HBCU student Michaela Harris earns $15,000 and an astronaut scholarship. Michaela Harris, an African-American student from Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland, is one of the winners of the prestigious Astronaut Scholarship Foundation Award. She received $15,000 in scholarship awards, among others. Harris, was, who was a senior from the School of Computer, Mathematical, and Natural Sciences, applied for the Astronaut Scholarship with an aim to represent Black women in STEM. There is not enough biomedical research that includes Black people, people of color, and other minority groups, Harris said in a press release. As a member of this university's Student Research Center, Harris said more opportunities open for her to learn about research and create research projects on her own. She credits the organization for her recent achievement of the astronaut scholarship where she highlighted her research activities. <coughs> Excuse me. So salute to Queen Michaela Harris for doing big things in the area of STEM. Um, we do need more black queens in that area. Um, and traditionally, Black queens have actually been trailblazers in that area. So mm -hmm. we really just need to get back to our original roots and have more queens represented there. So salute to her for trailblazing that. And um, yeah, man, that's been this week's positive Black news that you can use. Black. Hope it inspired. News. Hope it brought you some joy. Hopefully it just showed you, you know, the amazing things we're doing and Share this, you know, give this to somebody else. Let somebody else know good news is out there if we look for it. So, yeah, yeah man. Salute to the kings and queens. Some this black week. News. Share, share some news with us. Let us know some positive black news. That we Indeed, don't man. If, if you got positive black news, news stories throughout the week, yeah. shoot them to us, the, pod, that podcast, the partners podcast at gmail.com or just shoot them to us as a DM on Twitter or Instagram. Um, we love highlighting great shit. It makes us joy. It brings us happiness. So if you got some suited to us, we like it. And um, more yeah, positive yeah, yeah. shit is um, people winning things. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> and if you've been with us over the past couple of weeks, um, we've been working toward someone winning something. We've been working toward uh, one lucky MC being crowned as the partner's official top MC of the 2000s. So this is every MC from the year 2000 until now. Who is the number one guy? Who's that? 
Um, so we started by just establishing who have been actual MCs, who have not just been great artists, amazing artists, but may have not fit in our criteria. And our criteria that we use was marketability, um, how well you can earn money, um, how well your records sell, how well your shows sell, how well your merch sells, how much brand deals you get, how much, much exposure you're given, how well you're able to market yourself and create a buzz around your product. Um, the second criteria was lyricism. How well you put words together. How, um, how high level are your syllable combinations? How high level are your rhyme schemes, flow patterns, and cadences used? How do you, how well do you put together your figurative language, your idioms, similes, metaphors, um, entendres, um, all of these colloquialisms? How, how do you use these witty word plays to paint a picture? Um, and then lastly was stage performance, emceeing. How much do you rock a crowd? When someone goes to your show, when someone hears you performing, when you perform a freestyle on Hot 9-7, how do you get across your message? How are you actually controlling and commanding a room and or crowd? Um, now, part of lyricism was you could not have had a ghostwriter or a known ghostwriter, at least. So people like Drake, um, yeah. People like that were just not even allowed. Kanye, people like that were just not allowed just because they've had writers. So even though they are amazing artists and could be established for that, for top MCs, they just were disqualified. Um, so once we established our list, we had about 21 people that we put on there. Um, and then we started bracketing. Now the brackets were kind of done at random. Um, so last week we had the opening round. Um, and basically how we've done this and how we've decided to establish these brackets is the brackets were established. We had our opening round. And what we've done is we debate based on those three criteria and we vote for who we think out of the two people in that particular bracket go on to the next round. What we've also done, though, we have an online bracket that the pod squad has been voting on. And we use their votes. Their votes counts as two partners. So officially, we have five partners voting on each round. Now, after the three of us have given our particular choice as far as who we think and why we think this person should move on to the next round, we will then add in the pod squad's two votes for their particular choice for that round. And whoever receives at least three out of five votes will move on to the next round. Now, the opening play-in round, we decided ourselves. From there, the pod squad has already cast their votes, and we have their official votes as far as who they think should move on to the next round. So I have those listed here in front of me. And now we look at our bracket from this week. We're now in round two, and we're about to decide the quarterfinal round for the top MCs of the 2000s. So... Um, I'm going to share this. Hopefully I do this right. Y'all know I be struggling sometimes with technology, guys. Um, but give me a second. So, um, yeah, guys, y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? <laughs> Yo, I knew y'all was going to do it with me. I knew I won't be by myself. I knew I won't be by myself. I knew I, somebody was going to come in with the ignorant shit. Um, <laughs> so let's see if this screen share. Can y'all see my screen right now? I see oh, yeah. your screen. Beautiful. Right now. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Give me one second. Let me make sure the people at home are actually going to be able to see us by making sure I got this up. Bet it. Bet it. Don't sweat it. Your boy Tiz actually did it right, y'all. I actually did it right. All right. All right. So now that y'all can see the brackets here, as y'all can see, the opening rounds, we had uh, Toby Nigue moving on to face Kendrick Lamar in the mm. in round two, or the, the first official round, we should say. We have Rick Ross facing Wale. We had Conway the Machine beating Fabulous, so he's now facing off against Pusha T this week. We had uh, Schoolboy Q 
in an upset against Lupe Fiasco. This one probably hurt me more than any of them last week. Um, I got outvoted though. Um, so Schoolboy Q is now going off against Royce the Five Nine. Oh, hip hop head, surprisingly, y'all gonna be with me this week. Um, we then had Killer Mike in a in a close victory over Childish Gambino. Um, so he's facing Damn. off against Joe Budden this week. We got J. Cole versus Beanie Siegel. I'm interested to hear what my other two partners um, have to say on that one. Uh, we got Big Sean uh-huh. facing off against Chance the Rapper. And we have Nicki Minaj, who beat out Meg Mill, which is hilarious to me. Um, yeah. Still be facing off this week against 2 Chains. Hip-hop heads, I hope y'all with me this week. Um, Yo, I'm, I'm kind of mad that we don't have we don't have Lupe versus Royce. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I'm kind of mad about y'all that. Y'all voted for. Y'all did this. I know. I know. You did this. I know. Is this your king? But yeah. So that's where we at with it for this week, fams. Um, we're gonna get right off into it, and let's talk about Kendrick Lamar versus Tobin Negue. All right. We have I'll start it off first just because I feel like I know what it's going to go. I feel like I know what the pod squad said. I feel like I just got this pretty much. I already know how this is going to be. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to start off by just saying I love Toby Nigue. He's probably one of my favorite artists out, period. Um, probably even over Kendrick as far as who I would just like to listen to more. Um, love his message. Love the fact that he doesn't have to curse to get his rhymes out on lyricism. Um, on lyricism, I would actually personally give this a draw, but I know people are going to look at me like I'm a three-eyed monster. But yeah, I personally gave this a draw. On uh, marketability, I definitely gave this to Kendrick. I'm not delusional. Um, Kendrick is fucking box office. He's one of the top three hip hop artists, period. So yeah, Pull a not, surprise no, no delusions winner. there. Um, <laughs> and then as far as stage show, I actually gave it to Toby. Like I feel like Kendrick is real good at having people behind him. I feel like as far as like straight freestyle, them just just them and a mic. I feel like they both about equal. But when you get onto a stage show and who can with just them and a microphone, give me more. I feel like Toby can give me more because he can put on a whole dance routine to his shit and all that and add in that aspect as well as the actual just straight MCing and barn. Whereas Kendrick is just going to be to give me barn while his backup dancers and stuff do crazy shit behind him or like explosions go off or a scene behind him is set. But I don't feel like pound for pound they do. So I had it as a draw. So that's where I'm going to stand. So I'm going to give both of them a vote on behalf of me. <laughs> and now I open up the floor to the to the people who are less delusional than me. Maybe it's the meds I'm on. Maybe I'm crazy. But that's what I had. So y'all Maybe. can go. Facebook first. Go <laughs> Facebook first. <laughs> so um, I'm going to say Toby definitely rocks the crowd. Um, better than Kendrick, in my in my opinion, um, I can get behind Toby's performance a little bit more. Um, I feel both of them when they're giving their performance, but it's something about a top performance that draws your soul in. You feel me? Like some you 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 feel like you're a part of it. So I'm gonna give that category to Toby. Um, lyrics. Um, I know I can't have it as a tie, but the only reason that I could give it to Kendrick is because of his marketability. So his lyrics are heard more and touch more people as far as quantity, but as far as lyrical quality to me, I'm going to say Toby because, once again, he does have that ability to display that message in depth and as good as he want to be without cursing. And yeah. to me personally, that, really, that, that takes a, a, a different type of pen. Anybody can throw something up with a curse word in it and, damn right, I feel that. But to artistically articulate a point 
without having to use any vulgar vulgar words, but you can still paint that picture with that same emotion as you did use them, that's a different level to me. So I give it a toe for you on lyrics. So I mean out of, the, out of the three categories, I'm going with Toby, two out of three. Hey! <laughs> All right. All right. So I really can't. The way I listen to music now, I really feel like this is unfair on my end as far on Toby's side because. How to say? Man, I'll speak wait. your speech, Pat. I'll wait for the song to hit me. Like I'm waiting for the Toby song that actually hits me. You know what I'm saying? That's fair. Or whatever. And it's just so much music out there that I haven't been able to keep up with. With Toby, I usually go to my normal mainstays and go around it because I just don't have time to like listen to music like I used to, right. or whatever. So like. On my end, I'm probably going to just go ahead and put in for like Kendrick because just off of the ignorance that I have for Toby, whatever. Like this, what I've listened to before, I like, I liked it and I respect it when I just listen to it bar for bar and listen to what he says or whatever. But I feel like I only liked it because somebody told me about it that I'm cool with. So Got it. I'm I'm waiting. You don't have that for, organic bond to anything. Yeah, I haven't had that organic bond yet, and I don't want to just say I that's like fair. Toby because everybody else like Toby. I feel like that's disrespectful to Toby. That's fair. That's you know? fair. So you that's like why I'm, fair, bro. I'm like one sided on Kendrick or whatever. So um, really, I haven't. Well, I have seen Toby perform. Or whatever. I just haven't seen them as much as I've seen Kendrick, or whatever. So that's why I'm I'm like really one sided on the Kendrick thing, or okay. whatever. And I mean, it's still artists like Toby that I really haven't got into that everybody's telling me I should get into yet, or mm-hmm. whatever. But mm, it's just I haven't got into that phase yet. That's all. Just give me some time. I was the same way with Drake. No, I, no, I was the first person to tell people about Drake. I was the same way about shit, Pusha T, a couple of other rappers. Lil Wayne, right. I, I had to grow into him or whatever, so I feel like it's one of those things that I just gotta wait to grow into Toby uh, music, pretty much. So your official vote is? It's Kendrick. It's Kendrick. No problem, because... um. Yeah, this is where the pod squad definitely felt you. Um, yeah, it was overwhelming. It's Kendrick. <laughs> um, so K- Kendrick definitely won that round. That's why I wanted to go first. Just so uh, Toby, you heard me. Me and Face had your back there, brother. We we was we was rooting for you. We we just got out outvoted by a lot in a lot, as uh, Sir, Sue Surf was saying. We got outvoted in a lot. So um, yeah. <laughs> Um, the next round here, Rick Ross versus Wale, label mates when label mates become enemies. Anybody want to take the floor first on this? I will. Go then, my brother. All uh, right. So straight out lyrically, Wale. I'm going to just go straight up like that. Okay. But his marketability and where it should be at. Because of his lyrical ability. Which sounds crazy. Because you would think if you are a good lyricist, you would sell more records. But I don't know if if it's the, the label push behind him or what it is. But marketability, he ain't there. Hands down, Rick Ross has the marketability. Um, regardless of what scandal is being or what, Ross' name out there somewhere, you know, involved in something, he definitely has the marketability hand down. Not to say while he does not have marketability, he does have that damn lyrical ability, though. 
Now, when it comes to stage performance, I really don't know. About equal to me. Um, energy put into the performance about equal. Um, the visual effect, uh, of course, you're gonna get more with Ross because um, he's a big boss on the label, so you're gonna get more of the visual effect, more of that Rick Ross swag on the on his performance. On Wale, you got more of that that DMV style. So I don't really know it's a toss up on performance and giving giving it to the crowd. It's really a toss up on that one with me. Um, just because I fuck with Wale a little bit better, I, I'm gonna go with Wale. So that's my vote. Okay. So Wale and, on the board. And let me just say this. And let me just say this. Rick Ross is one of my favorite rappers. But I did not this, know that. The shit I be learning about my best friends on this podcast. <laughs> I just like the slow flow. Give him a slow flow rap. Go slow flow rap like. I can see that. But in this category, I'm going to go with Wale. Right on. So that's my vote. Pat? All your right. vote? <clears throat> Marketing, I feel like, goes with Rick Ross because Rick Ross has a whole fucking company. <laughs> Pretty much. So, yeah, that kind of goes with him. Um, Lyricism. Yeah. Lyricism, I'm gonna go with Wale. Even though I like Rick Ross more. Like Rick Ross is very good at like setting the tone, the setting, giving you like the movie feel with a song or whatever. But he how does that? He don't have like that. I'm about to just go the fuck in. You know what I'm saying? I could always go to him for some like. Don't get me wrong. He got some lines and bars or whatever when he say, and he be saying some real shit from time to time or whatever. But I don't go to Rick Ross to like go in on a freestyle as much as I can go in with Wale. Now with Wale, his music to me doesn't connect with me or whatever. Like I feel like. A lot of times, I don't know. And it's just something about him just seemed like it's like extra. And then like his girl songs and stuff like that. It just seemed like, yeah, you're trying to get a bag with this. But at the same time, like every time I hear him on a feature, he goes the fuck in on a feature. Like I love what, listening to Wale on features than I do on his actual music for real, to tell you the truth. Um, stage performance. I'll put it this way. I want to give this round to Rick Ross because I like Rick Ross music better. But, <laughs> but I just feel like Wale would give me a whole lot more energy on stage just because his background is his background is DMV. That's DC music. DC music is nothing but high energy music or whatever. Yeah. I can understand. I was, I was really thinking I was going to give this to Rick Ross, but <laughs> one out of two, I'm giving it to Wale, man. Wow. Go Wally. Yeah. <laughs> And, and this, this is one, from a person that don't really listen to what I listen to Rick Ross more than I listen to Wale. Right. So it's 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 throwing me off, but hey. Now I don't know if I should do this because I obviously I have the list of who the pod squad actually picked. So I know mm -hmm. which way this is gonna go already. Um I think I do too. So I don't know if I should put myself on the high seat as the tiebreaker or not. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say it and then let y'all see what the tie would have been. Um, <laughs> oh, fuck it. The pod squad picked Rose. Hmm. I'll be the tiebreaker. This was tough for me because I like these rappers for all of the reasons that you both outlined them. Like, Rick Ross speaks to a very specific time in my life 
that I still kind of have emotions around and like thoughts around. So like there's a resonance there with him that's like very deep to me. Like there's certain songs like that. Um, anything off the Port of Miami album? Yep. Every day I'm hustling. That, that, that talks Every to day me. I'm hustling. For real, for real. So like it was tough because also I Wale, he has that DMV vibe. He gives you that go-go feel. Um, and his lyrics relate to me on a level of like just being an everyday guy hollering at girls, like the struggle of being in relationships, the kind of being awkward at times, being an introvert. Like he speaks to a lot of things that are also just very much me. Um, but I actually gave the lyricism to Rose. Um, I feel like Ross can talk about everything that Wale can talk about, but Wale can't talk about everything Ross can talk about. And I think that versatility is where I draw the line. Um, lyrically, they have very different styles. Um, but as far as bar for bar, like the way they use words is different. I think that Wale is more into entendres and metaphors, whereas mm -hmm. to um, Rose is more on into similes and um, witty wordplay, like playing off of clever um, life lesson lines or like you know, cliches that everybody knows, but he finds a clever way to kind of flip it. Um, I feel like that's more his lane, but I feel like they're both equal as far as being proficient at it. Um, but Ross, man, he's just versatile, man. Like, he has more places he can go as far as his lyrical content than Wale can and still be believable as an MC. So, lyrically, I'm going to go Rosé. Um, stage performance, I actually got Wale just because I love go-go music and the fact that he uses a lot of live instrumentation and often gets into go-go pockets and puts that to those type of beats to a lot of his songs on his albums that normally would not have those beats. I rock with shit like that because, you know, I'm from Virginia and a big part of my party scene, especially in college, was go-go music. So I love that. So I gave that to Wale. Um, and then as far as marketability, it's not even close. Wale's awkwardness is um, the way he presents socially, his lack of his, his lack of tact at times so socially. Yeah, and the fact that he sometimes. doesn't have the budget that Rose has. Rose gets it, so I had to give it to Rose. And he don't have the budget to 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 say the shit that he'd be saying. And get away with it, like Rose too. Indeed. So, so um, Rose moves on. There you go. Um, for this next one, Conway the Machine versus Pusha T. Wait. Um, I'll start this all, man. I'm from Virginia, and ain't shit to do but cook. Um. Mm -hmm. I'm giving the lyricism to push. Um, again, it goes down to versatility to me. Conway the Machine to me is like your typical street rapper. But I cannot see him rapping to me about just regular everyday life shit and me it, it having the same resonance because he's established himself too much into one identity lyrically. So I'm going to go with Pusha T lyrically just because as far as like Bar for bar, I feel like they, they have equal talent, but the longevity, the versatility, and the fact that I've seen more from Pusha T lyrically just gives it to him from me. Marketability, I'm definitely going to say um, Pusha T. Um, he has more big name pushes, and he has the budget being the president of a label. He has the budget in his fingertips to market himself however he wants to, whenever he feels. Um, his album sales have definitely always been pretty decent. Um, he's always going at least gold. Usually that's usually his standard. Um, and as far as battling goes, you know what I'm saying? Which is one of those great lyrical contests. I feel like he's more battle tested. He's actually had to go at greats. He's had to go at one of the greatest artists of the 2000s in Drake. He's had to go at one of the greatest rappers 
uh, of any era, Lil Wayne. You know what I mean? So, like, when you look at those contests and he's actually held his own in both, I got to give it to Pusha T. Uh, lyrically and marketability-wise, he just has a bigger budget. Um, he's known by more people. Like, he's been around longer, so he just has that longevity factor, whereas he's had longer time to get international acclaim. And I think that a lot of these contests, especially now that we're getting into the elite of the elites, it's going to come down to, like, bigger than our small U.S. bubble. It's going to come down to, like, if I go to Brazil, what's the likelihood of a random kid there knowing who you are? Even if they may not know your song for song, they know who you are. Who's more likely to have that happen? And I feel like Pusha T is there. So marketability, I'm going with Pusha. So I'm already up 2-1 on Pusha. I ain't going to even go into the stage show because I don't really know a lot about Conway stage show. But since I'm up Pusha already 2-1, I'll just stop there. My vote, Pusha T. Well, I'll take this. Grinding. Um... I'm a Virginia head. I'm kind of biased. That's all that. <laughs> That's all that. I'm be honest. It's just like with my Barack Obama vote. I was biased. He was black. I was black. I was. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm kind of biased. Um, if you put Pusha up against anybody else that ain't on my top tier, just top tier, I'm gonna go with him just because I'm biased with the whole thing. But Lyrically, I'm going to give it to him because he's, once again, tried and tested. Been there and back. I can do the group thing. I can do the solo thing. Okay. Then I can come in. I can do the collaboration thing as well. Then I can also do a solo thing. I'm seeing push up on a different level. You feel me? Like, and he's not reached his peak yet. And look how long he's been out. Lyrically, he's still maturing. Mm. And you have to be a certain caliber to be where you can still be great and still mature as well and still learn and still sharpen your tools. And I see that in him because even though he comes out sporadically, when he does come out, it ain't the same type of shit. Even he gives you something different. He gives you more work, but he gives you something something different that's gonna make you like damn pushy you did the key. Um stage show, once again, DMV. I'm from VA. I I, I go with the DMV field more, more than other mother places. <laughs> uh <laughs> I think it's to your explanation about Ross over Wale. Um, Conway can do everything Pusha do. I mean, I'm sorry. Other way around. You feel me? You know what I'm trying to fucking say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pusha is greater and can do more. He's more versatile. He got more tricks to see. Ain't none of us going to like, lyrics of the night tonight. Mm -hmm. Hands down, I mean, I'm not even I'm not even gonna go to all three categories. I'm gonna just say Pusha T, man. He got my vote three. Thirty. He he just thirty kind of way to me. Um, when you announced who was going against each other, I already I already had it last week when you said I was like, oh, I know who I'm voting for. Shit, they don't even know think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, comment back. I don't know what the fuck you want to, but <laughs> it is what it is. Yo, I'm I know the comments shit. gonna light up on on face ass when they when they hear that. <laughs> we like, oh, could you even take this seriously when one of them says it? Huh. At least I'm honest about my shit. <laughs> I could have hit it and be like, you know what? No, I'm gonna just go this and laugh. No, I'm gonna push it to your hands down because I'm gonna be a bound. But at the end of the day, look at them lyric, lyric, lyric. You're gonna give it to push it. Look at marketability. You're going to give it to Pusha. He got the tag team flow once again. Let the clips come out with an owl. Let them get back together and put an owl out. I guarantee. That will shake the building. It's going to shake the fucking building. But then again, let Pusha put an owl out by himself. 
And it's still going to do what? Shake the damn building. Mark the building out of here. Shows. Now, being he's been, I'm going to give it to push on, 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 on giving it to the crowd on his show, his showmanship too, because once again, once you've been in a tandem, your chemistry and your flow and how you deal with the crowd is totally different because you're bouncing off somebody else. Then you take that skill set and apply it totally on yourself. You know how to control the crowd even more because that you have to balance your energy on somebody else. And that's all your energy controlling the crowd. You know what I mean? So I'm going to have to push it too. So once again, push it. Hands down. 30. Push. Yeah. All right, so I guess it goes down to me. Fight for your boy, Pat. Fight for your boy. All right. So, um, once again, yes, I am from Virginia. I am from the exact area code that Pusha T is from. Mm -hmm. I have seen Pusha T in his music career since the beginning. Since they've been out here with the funeral, that first song. Or whatever that came out when I was in high school. I've 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 been out there. I actually helped promote some of his stuff out here, like especially the. Um, I still got that first mixtape. You got it for cheap. They had out here, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, in most cases, I'm gonna have a Virginia bias, but at the same time. Just like with other artists, shoot, ironically, just like Lil Wayne, I grew into liking Pusher. At first, I was looking at him, ironically, just like y'all looking at Conway. He's just another street rapper that talks about drug dealing. Boy, Pat is <laughs> pretty a pretty much critic, boy. Pretty much. Especially when it comes to this rap stuff. So, let me get right down to it. Marketability. I'm giving it to Pusha. It, there's just, I mean, I mean, Conway is my boy, but Pusha has been on songs with Justin Timberlake. His main producer is Pharrell. <laughs> there's no like that. I would be stupid to say to say anybody it, Conway in this situation because Pusha T in his career. Just in general, Pharrell, he runs Kanye's freaking um, record label and everything. Like, he's gotten some achievements over the years. He's actually pushed the culture in certain ways with style and clothing and, and everything with the bait and everything. Like, he got some imprint on, on hip hop. So, marketability, I'm giving it a push. Lyricism. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna wait. Okay. I'm gonna wait. No, I'm gonna go right into it. Lyricism. Lyricism. Yes, Pusha has been around for a while. I give him that. But I feel like he's just now gotten to that level where when I hear something, I'm like, oh shoot, let me run that back. Wow. I've been listening to I've been listening to Conway and the Machine. Since they became, they came out like about five years ago, um, underground, like, was it 2014, 2000? I'm like one of the first people that actually probably even heard about them or whatever. These men, Conway on his own, come out with an album, will come out with a project three times a year, at least. Three times a year. And that's six, at least. I mean, I would say two of them probably have like maybe seven at the least tracks up there. Then he has one major, and in one of those three are uh, one major project. So two albums two, a year, basically. Two two albums a year, one EP. So three three projects, at least three projects a year, and that's not including group projects, pretty much. And mm-hmm. they have been doing this for the past consecutively past four or five years. Mm-hmm. Or whatever, I have not heard a rhyme where I right, I made. Are you forgetting the re-up game? I'm not. I'm and saying that, and that run that they went on when it was a mixtape every other damn week. I'm 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 I, like I said, I was there with that mixtape era, where it says 
when when I'm um uh, when it was I got it for cheap, pretty much. I'm just saying what's your lyricism, I, what's your lyricism argument for Conway? I feel like you're trying to make an argument for Conway here. Go ahead and make it. I want to hear this. His bars hit harder, man. In what his way? Boss, it bars hit harder. Like I like I can what like, specifically, technically, from a technical aspect, does he do better than Pusha T? Specifically, yeah, I would say his just he comes out with lines and bars m- way more on each verse than I can from a push. So verse. you're going from a quantity aspect. He has as a, a lot, quantity a aspect. lot of as, bars. There's a lot of bars. Yeah. I'm not. See, I'm okay. More for so, quality. I, now I that's quantity. Now. As far as like music, musically or whatever, I will give it a push of T, this, that, and a third. But as far as like, I'm going as far as bar for bar lyricism, I'm going to give it to Conway. Because I just feel like he just now Respect. got into it. And as far as, as far as the battle aspect to it, yes, he battled Drake. We can't even include Drake in this conversation, though. All right, so let's talk about somebody like Lil Wayne or whatever. But at the same time, it's like Lil Wayne couldn't even, like under the rules of Birdman, he couldn't even really respond back in that situation. So, yeah, and I, I mean, and then when I look at Conway or whatever, I don't think it's like many rappers that would want to battle him period so i'm going to defend him on that now as far as stage <laughs> performance now stage performance i'm going to give it the push just because he's been on too many stages he's been on way too many stages of all sorts of all varieties or whatever when when we talk about versatility i will give it on the stage performance side and and marketability side or whatever Stage performance, I'm giving it to push the T. Whatever. Okay. So yeah. I yeah. So in this round I'm probably is push the T pretty much. Uh-huh. But, he said all that to say that. Boy, come on home to Virginia. Because the pod squad I, agree, agree with you. I'm Virginia. So it's a and I mean, I, victory. First five and I, of the I, night. I can't Go say push. too much because I know <sighs> too many people that's connected with Pusha. <laughs> if they heard this, it's like, how are you going to vote against Pusha? Or I mean, but <laughs> I feel like Pusha would even say, would even put up a case for Conway. Much. <laughs> I doubt it. Have you heard a Pusha interview? Don't... He don't seem like the most... Uh... No, he don't, he I'm, don't I'm saying this. Arrogance and, uh, I, ain't, I ain't talking about. I ain't talking about against him. I'm talking about as far oh, okay. as bars. Like yeah. I can. We're I think I'm not saying Conway and Elite with the bars. We just saying against Pusher. Yeah. He ain't fucking nah, good. nah, nah, nah. I'm just you saying. I'm kind of hip hop, you don't, start speaking up at some point. I was. You had me lost for a second there. But um. I mean, just, it's still hip-hop, I actually man. don't even know how we got to this next this next uh bracket here. We got Schoolboy Q versus Boy Five Nine. Let me go first. Let me just speak my speech. Lyrics, lyricism, it ain't even close. All right, we not about to sit here and play around with Royce the Five Nine name. I ain't even about to do his name like that. I don't care what happened with him and Lupe or while, or him and uh Mickey. Royce is what he is. Um, mm. He's one of the reasons Eminem is so great from sparring with him. Like, mm-hmm. so, so, so let's just clear that up. Royce is top tier. He's one of the, I wouldn't put him in the God tier, but he's like in that tier right below it. Like he's neck. He's, 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 made, he's getting his way up there. Like he can fight with a Titan. He ain't quite a Titan, but he a guy. He he he, he can he can reach up and he punch one man. off. You know, they, they feel his him. effects. So I'm gonna definitely say lyricism Royce. Stage presence, I'm gonna give the schoolboy. Uh MCing ability, like the ability to rock a show, I feel like 
schoolboy, he be having them crowds lit. So it goes down to marketability. Mm-hmm. It's as simple as this to me. A shady bag, different champ. Mm-hmm. Now, I feel, I'm going to say it like this. In the past year, whose name have you heard of more? I'm going to say Royce. Mm-hmm. His album sales, um, decent. Um, he's had a gold album or two here and there, you know. Um, he's definitely done his thing with Slaughterhouse. Um, but he has more albums to sell than Schoolboy. Um, as far as touring, I think they're pretty neck and neck as far as where they hit. Um, they both have their own specific festival circuit that they hit. They also have their own pretty decent. They're, they're about at the same size crowd as far as the venues that they pack outside of festivals. Um, and I think... Yeah, I honestly don't know internationally. I feel like it depends on the country or something. I, I don't even know internationally, so I feel like I'll just put it as a watch there. But marketability, that shady bag is different. It's different. Mm-hmm. It's different. So I would just go schoolboy Q there. I mean, a Royce to five nine there. So I went Royce. Um, yeah, I went Royce. It wasn't even – it wasn't like a deep – conversation for me it was like oh yeah two out of the three Royce yeah easy yeah either one of you could take the floor now I'll let um, you go back all right it's about the same lyricism of course is Royce to listen to Royce since high school <laughs> or whatever but I've been listening to Schoolboy Q since it came out he's been one of my like out of the newer rappers or whatever, he's been one of my favorites, pretty much. Whatever. But um, lyricism, Royce. Stage performance, I'm going to give it the schoolboy. Um, but marketing is definitely Royce. They damn near got the same company as the marketing, but he's Eminem's homeboy. It's different different yeah like Ken schoolboy is Kendrick's homeboy it's different yeah yeah like I'm not saying Kendrick is not I listen to more Kendrick now mind you I was an Eminem fan when when he first came out I listen to more Kendrick now I feel like it's more relatable than I do Eminem but I remember what Eminem did and I remember who was there along the way, <laughs> pretty much. And yeah, yeah. So I'm giving it to Royce. Plus, Royce got mm. premiere as one of his favorite, as as one of his main producers. Like Ugh. that's a Ugh. Uh, the lyrics that those beats uh, inspire are always very epic. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Face yeah, mob, two albums. Yeah. Um, lyrics, of course, Royce. Of course. Of course. Hands down, Royce. He's a lyrical demigod, as I said before. Um, marketability. Ah. Don't know. International scale. Don't know. Don't know. National scale. I don't know either. Because you got a wide variety of like both people. Um, so I'm going to skip that for right now. I'm going to go to stage performance. Okay. Once again, once again, school boy rocks the crowd, man. Get them going. Royce, um, I feel like his core fans will, will be more into it, but on a more wide scale, no. So I'm going to say school boy, get it to his fans a little bit more, his performance and the ability to rock the crowd and command the crowd. Um, so we go back to that marketability, man, because right now it's one to one. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like you say, that shady bag is a little different. But once again, it's the shady bag. And we're looking at the marketability of the individual themselves. Um, if he didn't have the backing of shady, what would be his true marketability? And if there is no Kendrick Lamar, what's the true marketability of Schoolboy Q? 
Um, if we look at it just like that, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with schoolboy because when you think Royce, you think you think Shady. When you think schoolboy, you think schoolboy. You don't automatically think Kendrick. Um, it's two yes. separate entities. So I'm gonna go marketability for schoolboy. So two to one schoolboy for me, but I know most okay. he didn't win. Well, the pod squad definitely did vote against you, but it was, uh, I think it was like 2-1. So, pod squad <laughs> takes it over the top. It's 4-1 Royce. Royce moves on. Royce will be facing Pusha T next week. These ne- ne- next week is going to be interesting. Next week, we're gonna, it's going to be interesting. But, um, yeah. so we got the last, the first half of that bracket done. All right, let's get through these ones, guys. Um, one, next, once again, next people, one is. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say once again, people. We're not just talking about because I know it's going to be a lot of extra hip hop heads who want to be thinking. We're not just talking about lyricism or whatever. So we're not just talking about lyricism. Total. It's just one part of it. Just one part of it. Now, if Indeed. it was just lyricism, I think these brackets this would, look would be a lot different. Oh, yeah. yeah. Most definitely. They just want to put that out. It might have even been some other people that would have been added that I would have added to this list that our initial list that would have been considered that I did not just because I knew it was all three facets. And I was going to say honorable mentions that I realized after a while after hearing some music. um, J-Rock and Tyler, the creator. I heard Tyler, the creator, go in on this song on West Side Gun, and I'm like, oh, shit, I have not heard you do this in a while. <laughs> well, I'm gonna just throw this up there. I just Googled it while we was on the phone. Net worth, Royce the Five Nine, net worth $3 million. Ooh boy Q work, net worth $4 million. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got it. Out there. I ain't heard shit about Schoolboy Q all year. I heard about Royce the Five Nine last month. That's because they're waiting there for this Kendrick. They waiting That's for okay. Kendrick and SZA. Okay. But I gotta. I'm just gonna put it there. Um, but in our next round, we got Joe Budden versus Killer Mike. Um, hmm. I'm gonna just be Let me with my, I'm gonna just go ahead and throw mine out there. I picked Joe Budden. Um, I feel like lyrically. They're close, but Joe Budden has a wider place that he can go. And I honestly just think Joe Budden's a better lyricist overall. Um, stage presence, I gave it to Killer Mike. Um, I feel like his presence is just, it, it's, it's like he has one of the presents like that even if he ain't rapping, he just walk into a room and he commands the energy toward him. Mm-hmm. So like, and he's that's one of those. Right. So um, he definitely takes it there. Um, and then marketability. Joe Budden is Joe Budden. Like, Joe Budden is an international name. People know him. Whether you know right, his song or not, you know him. Pump It Up is an international. Like, they use it to, it's a jock jam. When you, mm-hmm. reach, when you reach them type of levels with a song, whether you, your albums are as famous or not, your marketability is through the roof. So, Joe Budden, I gave it. So, I gave it to Joe Budden 2-1. Easy money. Yeah, I'll go quick. I fucking hate Joe Button, man. Um, just wanted to say that first. I fucking hate Joe Button. Um, but lyrically, he got him. I hate to say it, but lyrically, he got him. But hands down, Killer Mike stomps him on the stage. The delivery, the command of the stage, the command of the people. Yeah, it's all Killer Mike, man. It's all Killer Mike. So it all boils down to the fucking marketability. God damn if I ain't have to give it to Joe. Pump, pump, pump the fuck up himself. Pump, pump, pump it. Pump, 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 didn't pump it up. To. Just please. Didn't want to, but with the category, <laughs> gotta be real, gotta be true. No bias there. Because once again, I fucking hate Joe Button. But lyrically and marketability, he, he, he outshines Killer Mike, so. I guess my vote's for fucking Joe Button. Pow! All right. 
man, this is funny. <laughs> Face is funny as fuck. Or whatever. Mind you now, people, this is all biased. So my personal opinion or whatever is actually stricken to the side on certain on this thing or whatever. Uh, all right. Lyricism, Joe Button, just because he has a lot more content. And I feel like he actually has a lot of, I think he actually sparked a lot of rappers on the low, um, expressing themselves about life situations and emotions on the low or whatever. Just, he was like one of those first rappers in an age of drug rappers to actually talk about, hey, this is how I feel about this situation. And I'm going through this. So, yeah. At the same time, while Kanye is saying it. Um, stage present, Killer Mike. Because it's fucking Killer Mike. Th- his voice alone, as soon as he says something, Killer ki- it's over with. You're going to listen to him. Joe Budden has, he has the fabulous syndrome where even if he's probably saying it with expression or whatever, it still has that I'm cocky and everything I'm going to say is going to sound hard, so you, you're going to like my shit anyway type voice to it, pretty much. Um, so that leads down to marketability, and I, I I feel sorry for Killer, but it's Joe Button. Joe Button, lyric, it literally started half of the social media, like the social media behavior that we have out here good and bad. Like, he's one of the first people to just put his regular life on, on the internet. He gave whatever. Vlad TV a start. By mistake. Yeah. He hates Vlad yeah. <laughs> with a passion. And I think that has to do with him and Ransom and that past previous thing from what I've, I've seen. But, Man, like, I fucking hate you. Hey. Like, it's, I ain't mean, love or hate or bad. He's, he's a bit of innovator. He's a bit of an innovator. And there's certain things, man, he get on my nerves about a certain thing, but at the same time, like... I hate the nigga's beard. <laughs> it's just that you just don't like that nigga because you don't like that nigga. So who was your pick that? Joe Budden. I hate her. Okay. He with his mustache. And the pod squad picked him as well, so that's the first, uh, the second 5-0 victory we've had tonight. It's a word. Three left. We get to J. Cole versus Beanie Siegel. Now, this is tough because they kind of were in two different eras of the 2000s. Um, Beanie just squeaked in as a 2000s rapper just because his album was released at the very top of the year 2000. Um, So he kind of ran the early 2000s, whereas J. Cole has kind of come in during the 2010s and kind of been a major fixture there. So, yeah, it's kind of era against era within the 2000s. Um, I'm going to say lyrically. Say, say J. Cole. Um, yeah. I, J. Cole has – Mac is my guy. Don't get me wrong. There was a time when Beanie Mac was, could do no wrong. But even in Beans' own crew, state property, he wasn't my favorite. P.D. Crack was. So, like, if you weren't even my favorite in your own crew, lyrically, it's kind of hard for me to put you over a dude that is the my top dude in his crew. Um, also, like, at no point when Beans was out did I ever put him as, like, one of the top rappers out at that time. J. Cole, I would put up there, like if somebody came to me with an argument against Jay-Z and said J. Cole, I would ha- I would have that conversation with him viably. Not having that conversation with you about J and B. Just not. Um, so like I think lyrically J. Cole wins. Stage presence, I give it to Beans. Um, his believability is just ridiculous. He does an interview and I'm like enthralled. Like I just want to hear him say more. Like, so I feel like that aura just goes a long way with his stage presence. And I, I've i seen his concerts, man. It's it's a different vibe to see that many people singing his verse from even though what we do is wrong. But that, like, 
They yeah. still play it to it's this different. day. It's different. It's different. Um, so I gave that to Beanie. And then marketability during their times. This is where it gets tough. But I feel like during their times, J. Cole's marketability is crazy. Off the fact that he has social media as a push. Beans was completely relying on Rockefeller to push him. But He, to my knowledge, doesn't have a certified platinum album while he was actually active rapping. J. Cole does, and he did it without even having a commercial for the shit. Like, literally, motherfuckers went to sleep and woke up, and the album was here, and that shit went everywhere. Mm -hmm. All off the fact of social media and him building that buzz and him building that connection with his fans is, like, really organic. So I feel like he has an advantage, but advantage or not, He's bigger. Like, yeah. So J. Cole wins to me 2 1. I had J. Cole. Well, J. Cole, J. Cole, and Bean, Beanie Sequel. Tough match. Tough match. Early 2000s, late 2000s. Like you said, two different generations different type of styles but you still gotta have a conversation so I'm gonna start with stage flow stage presence some ability to control the crowd get your message out I'm gonna give that one to beans um but I attribute that to his era as well um you had to you you had to have some type of stage presence you you had to sell it you you had to bring that authenticity back then. Um, when now you can rely more on on the technology and other things and background and a lot more a lot more other elements. So just on the authenticity and pure energy that beams brought and the fans fed off that. And like I said, to this day, when you wrap that beans verse, you gonna wrap that with that energy, you feel me? So I'm gonna get at the beans. Um, marketability. Um, I'm gonna say J. Cole. Um, his reach is a lot wider in his prime and Beans prime. Um, Beans' reach was attributed to the clique he was attached to. Um, rather was Rockefeller or State probably he was always seen with a click. So him being known on a wide scale, sure you know Bean, but you know State property too. Um I don't even know the name of J. Crew of Lane, excuse me, J. Cole's um crew. Or if he even has one. But I know about J. Cole himself. You feel me? So that wide reach he has of the, like him himself can touch more ears and more households than beings because of his prime. So that's that. Now, lyrically, that's a tough conversation. Um, they both got different ways to get their message out artistically, and they can both articulate on a different level. Um, in a group setting, we've seen what beings can do on features and duets and all the other shit. We've also seen what J. Cole can do on his features, his solo, and with a group as well. On standalone, I'm going to give it to J. Cole. Feature-wise, I give it to Beans, because when Beans on the feature, he just comes differently. His lyrical prowess on the feature is a little bit different than when he comes by himself. But then you got to look at the body of work. How many features did you have to match up to a solo a solo career like him standing on his own? So lyrically, with what he can do, where he's at in his career, and the amount of time he still has to mature, I'm going to give it to J. Cole because what he's done so far lyrically is outstanding, and he's not been in the game over so long. At the same amount of time Beans have been in the game, I don't think he had reached that lyrical prowess. So I'm going to get it to J. Cole. 
2-1. Okay. Pat? All right. <clears throat> All right. I'm giving it to Cole. Y'all already really explained the reasons why. But I want to be clear, whatever. Beans, Beans is the guy that got one over on Jada Kiss. This is, is true. Not, I feel like Beans supposed to be in the category in, in the same school as with Jada Kiss or whatever. But because of the stipulations that we have, he's in the 2000s or whatever. Got a man caught outside like, of his time. Yeah, basically. I think he was, and I think that's generally what happened with his career. He's a man caught outside of his time. Like, I feel like lyrically, Beanie Siegels is up there with anybody, but where he may lack at or fall short at, J. Cole will pick up at, pretty much. As far as, like, with Beans, with his lifestyle, it ain't but so much he's going, as far as the realm of music, he's going to go. Like, you don't get me wrong, he has he has music that reach out to everybody. I can feel it in the air and stuff like that. But at the same time, if you're a regular person, you're not going to feel the drug dealer music but so much. Unless you're me, because I'm weird and I grew up on just hardcore rap anyway, so I listen to all kinds of rap. But I just feel like Beans in his career fair sh- fell short um, just off of his personality. And J. Cole is the result of what happens when J has a artist and and what he could do to that artist to his best extent or whatever. Like, like J. Cole, J. Cole has albums by himself that are platinum. You know what I'm saying? Like, he got his own fan base. He's not trying to portray an image or whatever. And the people in it, people that would normally you consider like gangster rappers, or street rappers, they all give him respect. Like they all, you know what I'm saying? Like all around from the nerd, all, all genres to the people that like nerd rap, to the people that just like street rap, like to the people that like emotional life situations or whatever. He covers all that. So I give it to J. Cole. Beanie Siegel, I will say as far as stage presence, yeah, I'm, I'm. I agree with y'all with that. Like, as far as stage presence, but at the same time, J. Cole's stage show is getting better and better, pretty much. But that's all I gotta say. J. Cole, indeed, indeed. and, and that's my brother, my third five zero winner of the night. And my and my brother voted for J. Cole too. Ah, thank <laughs> you for voting there, brother, brother. That's his favorite rapper, so I'm not mad at him. Well. He's going to have to show up for him again next week because he's going to need help. Because uh, what's he facing? Yeah, next week he's going against Joe Button. So the J against the J. Hmm. That ought to be a good one. Yeah. Some different angles to take as far as the, at least the breakdowns. Um, but in our second to the last matchup of the night, we got Big Sean versus Chance the Rapper. Um, Pat, you want to go first here? I'm going with Big Sean. Okay. Don't, I'm going with Big Sean. <laughs> that was confident. <laughs> I'm going Big Sean. I get really – all right. Marketability. I'm going like, to – marketability, I, I feel like Chance may have him a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? But um, lyrically, I pick Big Sean. And as far as – Stage performance, I pick Big Sean. I, I'm at a bias mostly because Chance the Rapper voice kind of gets on my nerves sometimes, <laughs> just in general. But at the same time, I've heard him say, he got this line on this song with Action Bronson or whatever, like when he was going in. I actually put it on the thing, but uh, 
Chance the Rapper music annoys me a little bit more. It's way too happy. It's, it's, it's just way too fucking happy, man. Like, he's a, he's a great lyricist. And I know, you know, for some people, he makes great music, man, but it just, it's not for me, man. It's too happy. I'm going for Big Sean. Big Sean gives me all, gives me everything. He checks the boxes more than, for you. Yeah, uh, more than understood. Face? I don't like neither one of these niggas' music. <laughs> well, okay. Be honest with you. I mean, I don't really fuck with Chance Rapper at all, but his marketability is Mr. Dorito. So, um, yeah. He has the hat. He, he's very marketable. He got that show on Netflix with T.I. and um, Cardi B. Um, he got the commercial with the boy band. So, I mean, his crossover ability is very, very high. Um, so, that's that. He, he getting money, do his travel thing, but that's not in the qualification. Um, his marketability, yeah, chance. Um, basically, I'll come back to that because once again, I don't like me one of these motherfuckers. Um, stage presence, uh, shit, it's a toss up between the two because they both bring energy to their stage presence with their type of music, um, different different areas, but flows are. Uh, I'm not gonna say similar, but similarly unique. I'll say that. Um, I'll give it a check. I'll give it. No, excuse me. I'll give it the big show on stage present, command the flow, command the crowd, ability to deliver that message there. Um, lyrically, really don't listen to you on these motherfuckers. Um, shit. I've I've heard more big show on music. Because I really can't listen to a rapper that long. His voice, it's highly, it's highly annoying. I told you. That's in my opinion. That's in my opinion. I just in mine too. To a, I, I really can't. Um, I really can't say I, I've ever heard Chance say anything memorable for me. But I've heard Big Sean say a few things more memorable. Um, I can't remember them now. But if I heard the song, I could say I could sing along with it. Where a chance the rapper song, I'm I'm not even singing along with it. I'm just got it on because it's on. Um, so I'm gonna go Big Sean. Oh. Two one. I bet you remember this. I don't fuck with you. <laughs> that was Damn Big right. Sean song. <laughs> Damn right. Hey, he was snapping on that song. He was mad. <laughs> Well, I'll be the outnumbered party here. I picked Chance the Rapper. Um, so, like, lyrically, he said more mind-blowing things to me um, or more things that I just thought were like, oh, fuck, that was amazing. He gives me the type of bars that I like, which are those that are right, the low-hanging fruit, but nobody sees the branch. Um, yeah, he's good at that. My daughter looked just like Sia. You can't see her. Um, you know, shit like that just... I love shit like that, you know. Treat your, treat your friends just like Pam. Oh, treat, treat your homie just like Pam. I mean, I fuck with your friends, but damn, Gina, like, I don't know. I like shit like that. It, it, it it's my type of shit. Um, I feel like he he's more versatile because he hasn't boxed himself into any one place, so he could talk about drug use the same way he could talk about being a Christian, the same way he could talk about uh, having some dreadhead niggas in your lobby. Um, Marketability, it ain't even close. Chance is everywhere. Chance, Chance is up there with like the Drakes and people like that of the world as far as marketability. And then uh, stage presence. I prefer a stage show of Chance the Rappers as far as his type of energy and the way he's interacting with the crowd. Um, I like the way he gives you different nuances from where he'll slow it down, kind of give you one of those uh, more introspective songs like the John he got with Daniel Caesar. And then he'll bring it back up with a young one, no problems. And then he'll bring it back to a religious place with the, his verse from Ultra Like Me. Like he has more places he can go and pour range in his stage show that he gives you. So, yeah, it was easy for me. Chance three, all three criteria, chance three. But I was outnumbered by you guys and the pod squad because they picked Big Sean as well. So, 4 1, fucking Big Sean. 
I would say if Chance and Boyce was so annoying, <laughs> I would probably like him a lot more because I've heard him go in. It's all just, right, people. It's all yeah, good because we're about to get to the same thing for me right now. Nicki Minaj versus 2 Chains, the last of the second round. Um, this places our last person in the quarterfinal round, which is going to be held next week. That'll be voted on all of this coming week between today, Tuesday, and next Tuesday. So, um, let me go first. Yeah. Get this shit out the way. Um, Nick Minaj, two chains, man. Um, lyrically, I'm going two chains. They both have stood the test of time. They both stood up against people that only God tier. Um, and hell their own. But two chain to me is just an innovator of the wordplay. Like, god damn it, shit he says just like what did you just say that what? So I'm, I'm gonna give it to him. Um marketability. Uh them damn barbs. <laughs> but two chain, man. But two chain. They're both known internationally. But two chains marketability takes him to other places that Nicki Minaj's attitude won't allow her to go. <clears throat> two chains has different TV shows. You feel me? Like the the world's most expensive shit. That shit he does. The marketability gets him in a different arena. Sure, her fame can get her in a different arena. But his attitude and his marketability open up other doors for two chains. That I don't think Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj can open. So marketability, I'm gonna give it two chains. Stage performance, sure. Who doesn't like seeing that woman shake her ass? But I'm not to. I'm not at a rap show just to see that. Because I'm like, I'm there for the full, <clears throat> the full and beyond. It ain't all about just shaking your ass. If you you're just looking at that, any female rapper would have a better stage performance commanding the crowd. It's just about that. But it's not just about your body. It's not just about your dance moves. It's about the whole show. And I'm going to give it to 2 Chain for the whole show because I believe he brings something different with his show. I mean, just his personality, once again, it, it exudes out of him on his, with his show. So I feel like the crowd feels that more. I'm going to go to 2 Chain. I believe he's just 30, Nicki Minaj. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll go next. This was easy for me. Um, outside of market, like marketability was the only close one for me. Stage show, two chains, hands down. He's give he'll give you acapella moments. He he'll dance. He'll crowd surf. He'll give you rock and roll style moments. He'll give you more introspective slow down moments. He'll give you the sing along moments. He'll give you moments where he's just barn heavy. Nicki Minaj to me is all sing songy sing-along moments and shaking her ass outside of those two th aspects her stage show is not that great to me um marketability uh lyricism two chains to me they, they have a similar similar style it's a lot of heavy metaphors and simile play um <laughs> as far as syllable work though i think two chains jumps into more pockets there um he's more versatile as far as the lyric type like He's not reliant on certain similar, I saying the same catchphrase, you my sons, you my sons, you my, like I'm tired of hearing about Nicki Minaj's sons, mm. that, that shit is redundant. Um, so 2 chains one there for me and then marketability, it was very close, but like Faith said, the attitude is what changed it for me. Um, I feel like 2 chains has been in, involved in more marketing campaigns, more shows, more opportunities, and a lot of it is due simply to his attitude. I feel like Nicki Minaj has probably had more chance to do these opportunities, but as far as who's actually made it through and followed through and we've actually seen as a part of these things, I feel like two chains is ahead. So, yeah. 30. All right. So it's my turn. And you know what? It's your guys? time to shine. 
I am going with Nicki Minaj because she has some ass shots. I'm joking. I'm not going with Nicki Minaj. I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm joking. It. Yo, she appealed to your teaching. anaconda in one, huh? Got it. Yeah, they hey, hey. The anaconda don't want nothing. All right, that's enough of that. Pretty much. <laughs> that's enough of that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> two chain. All right. Marketability. I'm going to give it to Nicki Minaj because the barbs reign supreme. But everything else is two chains. Stage presence, two chains. I actually. I'm, man, 2 Chainz cool, man. Every time I've actually seen him in per- person, he's been the coolest person. Like, when he was with the Duffel Bad Boys or whatever, I was promoting, and I actually promoted, got him to, they followed me to the club where he's supposed to perform and everything. It was just like, hey, man, get fucked up. Here it goes. It's on me. <laughs> so it's all around a cool person. And then... Cool Chainz. Same, same thing. I was like... Cool Chainz. That time I went to Atlanta, I randomly was in a club and he was there and he just passed blocks and I was in the VIP. I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, all right, thank you, sir. I wouldn't do that now because of COVID, but yeah. The other main reason why. This is the main no reason longs. why I picked two chains. Two chains can go on anybody's song. He is Frank's, he's period. the Frank's red hot sauce of hip hop. <clears throat> Put that shit on anything. Two chains could be on T.I., Lil Wayne. He could be on an Outkast song. Of course, Ludacris. He's been on Ludacris song or whatever. But rap. not just that. Not just that. Other rappers, other regions. Chance the Rapper. He's been on um, Gucci on songs with Kendrick, Gucci. Big Gip. Big Gip. Not only that. Not only that. He's also been on songs with rappers you don't expect him to be on. Like Fabulous, Jada uh-huh. West Side Gun. He was just on West Side Gun. On. He was just on Benny's album. Shit, I think he was on Conway's too. I think he was on all three of them niggas' albums. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, he's been on... He, I will catch a random 2 chains verse on albums I would not expect a 2 chains vo- verse on. Too many Period. verses! Period. He don't care who you are. If you underground, he'll put a verse up there. If, you, if you're underground, you like it, put a verse up there. If you, West Coast, it don't matter. He fits on everything. So that's why I picked Two Chains. Two Chains. Tony with the, with the five zero victory because that was also the Pod Squad's choice as well. So it wasn't just us, folks. The Pod Squad chose this as well. And if you disagree or you want to have your voice heard in this coming week's bracket, as you can see, coming up this next week in the quarterfinals, we got Kendrick Lamar versus Rick Ross, Pusha T versus Royce the Five Nine, Joe Budden versus J. Cole, and Big Sean versus Two Chains. If you want to have your voice heard, all you got to do is click the link in the description below on this week's podcast. Also, this will be on posted to our social media, the link to our uh, poll. It's the same link as last <laughs> week. So if you voted last week, go right back to that same link. The round two is open as of right now. As you are hearing these words come from my mouth, round two is available. So go ahead, click that link from last week. Um, but yeah, get your votes in so that your two votes can be added to ours and you can break our ties or break our, uh, you know, discrepancies as you can see tonight already um yeah we kind of were along the lines of the pod squad but i some of us definitely got outvoted and next week the debate will be even tougher because we get into the big dogs the top eight will now be whittled down to this final four so get your votes in pod squad get your votes in click the link in the description below check out our social media sites you will have the link there and vote, 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 vote. Share the content. Vote some more. And vote. Share. Yeah. Engage. And that is this week's edition and round of the top MC of 2000s going into the quarterfinals next week. So now I guess that brings us to my segment. 
So this week, I'm going to preview my new segment because I, I really love movies, man, and I've been watching movies all my life. I consider myself to be somewhat of a, a movie buff. So we can go into Faces Movies in Review, where I review movies in my own non-conventional way. Um, I say non-conventional because I don't see movies through just one set of eyes, man. I watch movies more than one time and as different facets in your life and different times of your life, you see different movies in different ways. So if you watch it in your early 20s, it should be different when you watch it in your 30s. You should see That's other real. things out of the movies. So this week, I'm going to discuss the movie Norbit. Okay. So, first thing. I did not now, see that the Norbit was a good movie. I mean, all around, it had its ups and downs. Um, I, I don't think it sold as much as it could have sold. I don't think the marketing campaign behind it was really where it should have been at, um, especially in Eddie Murphy's career. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Now, with this movie, the first thing I'm going to talk about was while while Norbit was a company, it used humor to cover topics that are not normally talked about. One thing such as male domestic violence and male domestic abuse. Um, in this movie, Rasputia, the uh, main antagonist, <laughs> kicked Norbert's ass most of the movie. It ain't funny, down, but the way you him. said it, kicked Norbert's you me, like, ass. I mean, she seriously did. I mean, she fucked him up. She threw him through the window. She tried to hit. She she tried to kill this man. You feel me? To hit him in the head with a large speaker, knock him unconscious. <laughs> but. It was just seen as huge. I don't remember this movie as well as most people probably do. Like I know it happened. I know I've seen it. It's true. It was like it was like a bootleg one time, real quick, and Mm -hmm. I kind of moved on. Exactly. But you feel me? No one really looked at that. It was like, oh, she she abused him. They were just laughing at ha ha ha. But reverse the situation and have Norbert beating Rasputia ass. It's gonna be a totally different music. I mean, totally different movie. Excuse me. Regardless of how much it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a Tyler Perry movie. You feel me? It's gonna be a different type, a different type of coming of the age movie. But this movie, like seeing it at a younger age, I didn't see that. You feel me? I seen what most people see, and it's just just the humor. Oh, she whooping this boy ass. Oh man, you better run it. Oh, how you stand up? He's up. But seeing it as an older man now with with kids and a, a preteen. I see it a little bit different because there's different messages I'm seeing in the movie now. So, I mean, it covering that topic, even with humor, it, it, it tried to bring a different light to what some men are going through but don't want to speak up about because it's kind of, uh, it puts shame to some men. And some, and, and, it's kind of uh, taboo. The wife is scared. You feel me? Like, it, it's kind of taboo to be like, yeah, my wife beat me. Even, but that movie, it, it shed light on it. But moving on. Um, the movie also covered other issues like, self-doubt and overcoming the odds. Um, Norbert is being a, a orphan. His parents abandoned him on the on the doorstep, threw, excuse me, threw him out the car as a baby, and he just rolled on the doorstep. Well, the damn. Orphan, just a wolf, and the wolves about to eat his ass when Mr. Chang came outside and got oh, him oh, another baby. Yeah. yeah. I do not remember this movie. What in the hell? Yeah. What kind yeah, of I'm shit was Eddie movie. Murphy on? <laughs> was he out of Ayahuasca? And the even the from world. the beginning, they labeled him, they labeled him as an ugly baby. Even for me, you know, the dude picked him up and said, "Oh, we got another ugly one. Oh, it's a black one. Another ugly one." So, I remember that. It was, it was, it was, I remember the <laughs> little Asian man that Eddie Murphy played because it was a big, like hubbub about him playing that mm-hmm. Asian man. Oh, that's a so, bigger woman. All his childhood, yes. All his childhood, he had self doubt from originally being an orphan, so that 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 had something to do with it. So growing up. With the male abuse he got all his life, because Grace Busha made him be her boyfriend at a very early age. So all his life, he didn't have no real family. He just long, longed to be a part of something. So that self doubt was in him. Thinking he Can you imagine that? Life. Never having no other cookie. It, you feel me? Never ever. But in the end, cookie that you never got, even you sniffing know. another cookie. That's not even exactly. a cookie. That's a cake. That's a full cake. A full that bakery. Ain't no that you- that I don't want none. Um, that should have parfait. But throughout the movie, man, he he overcome the he overcame the odds in the movie, and at the end, seeing the, his self worth and his potential, and did what he needed to do to stand up for himself. You know, so he, it's more of like a that type of come coming of the age movie where he overcome the odds of self doubt and became what he should have became. Next thing, 
this movie really really showed that true love never fails. Um, that that age old fairy tale. Um, it focused in on Norbert, and I forget the young lady's name who played the actress or even her name in the movie. But as kids in the orphanage, they were both orphans. They fell in love with the orphanage. They they play like they got married as kids. Um, she got adopted. Of course, Norbert didn't. So he grew up his whole life. Eventually, she moved back to town. They dealt with whatever they needed to deal with. Got her. She was supposed to get married. He stopped the wedding. They end up getting together, having lived out. So one of them fairy tale love stories. You feel me? We meet, mm-hmm. you leave, you come back. I think her name was Kate. Years, you can get together still. So I mean that that the movie touched on a lot of different a lot of different things. <laughs> um, fourth the fourth thing about this movie, um, it was a very stacked cast. Man, you had Cat Williams, Eddie Griffin, Cooper Gooding yes. Jr., Eddie Murphy, um, uh, uh, Charlie Murphy. Cruz. <clears throat> um, even the child remember it, 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 very stacked cast, but I feel like Clifton the cast Powell. and they for me to value was overshadowed by Eddie Murphy still playing multiple roles. It's even like I feel some of the roles in that movie he had, he could have gave up to some of those other actors, some of those other comedians, and helped. Agreed. Them I would have liked to see Eddie Griffey as the Chinese man. You feel me? Like something. You feel me? Like because he has he has range too. So I feel like that even though that cast was stacked. And that movie should have sold just based on how stacked it was. I feel like the performances was overshadowed by Adam Murphy just doing his normal multiple character roles, even though they were still good characters. I don't feel like he he had to do. He didn't have to play Norbert Rasputia and Norbert and, and the dude from the um and the Chinese dude. Like one of the, one of those roles could be given to somebody somebody else that was a comedian in that movie. Right. So like he could allow Williams and Eddie Murphy. I mean, I'm missing Eddie Griffin to explore that range more than just just the little church scene with the pimps or just the scene outside. Like they could do it more into that character, more character development with them. Um, it could have been a little bit better with that. Um, last one: um, Was this movie really, really realistic, or did they really try too hard to be funny? Um, I feel like they use humor to to their advantage. Um, the variety of different topics they covered. The human, the human, the human really mask everything. So no one really focuses on the drama in the movie or the the romantic aspect. It's more just the all around humor, where underlying aspects of the movie, if you suck some of the humor out, it's a different type of movie altogether. You definitely you know, made me remember movie. the movie in a different way because I I don't remember half of this shit, but. Oh, I and the girl the, name is the was big, is the is the big woman sliding down the water slide. That's like the only real scene yeah, that's I remember. My, that's my goal. She could never get out of the car. That's my goal with this segment, man. Just to make people just bring back, bring other movies back that are somewhat cult classics that I know a lot of people and a lot of different variety of people have seen. But you may have seen it once, but look at it again and look at through your different set of eyes you have now. Because as we grow. We adopt different different beliefs than what we had when we first saw a movie. So some things may used to be funny to us, ain't gonna be funny now. You feel me? We gonna see a movie like I never noticed that situation. I didn't know he was beating her ass. Or I I never thought I would say this again after the first time I saw it. But you have me intrigued to see Norbert again. Like I actually watched that movie again. Overall, overall, it's a funny movie. movie. Yes. Yeah, it's a good movie, man. It's a comedy that with hints of drama. Uh, I'm excuse me, hints of romance, a dash of drama, and some damn good performances by some of your favorite comedians, man. So I do recommend the movie. Um, but see it through different my, eyes. See it through the different different eyes when you had when you saw it the first time. Right on. My favorite scene is the puppet show. I don't know that shit. That shit. <laughs> puppet what show. Did I watch the puppet he show? Was... He's spending all his time down. Norman spazzed out on that pig. Would you, oh, you fat piggy ass? <laughs> what? You fat piggy ass? <laughs> yo, yo, like Norman. I ain't uh, a fan of no orphanage. puppet pig, so I'm I I can rock with him on that. Norbert was supposed to do a puppet show for the kids at the orphanage, from Mr. Wong's orphanage, and <laughs> he and and he just he just saw a uh, Rasputia. With uh, with a personal trainer or whatever, he, he snapped Marlon and Wayne. relapsed. Oh, Rasputia yeah. cheated on him in this movie. With yeah. Marlon Wayne. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. And the girl that name was Kate. Kate. The love interest. That love interest was named Kate. 
You there mentioned you go. was gonna make sure that shit was named Kate, won't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you was stuck on that shit, boy. He yeah, was gonna make sure we knew that her name was Kate, goddammit. I Googled that joke, man. And if you didn't know, he's it. also single. Whatever else, I'm trying to think of the other shit that he's gonna repeat. Yeah, um, too. He's single. Um, yeah, don't her forget. Her name is Kate. Yeah. And uh, pretty Microphone much. check one, two. I can feel it. That too. <laughs> My thing is about that time, man. Oh shit! It might be. It's what? definitely late enough for it to be that time. I feel. Oh, no. I feel the goofiness coming in. So it's it's about that time. Oh well, for real. You know what? Well, let me go. Um, I need to get the G and F list out of my man bag since y'all brought it up. That's why I keep my pencils and all this stuff. All right, so I'm gonna pull He's reaching it right into the up. pet purse. No, right. Don't call it a purse. <laughs> my man. Don't call it a man bag. bag. It's been here for years. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But it ain't time for man bags. I tell you what it is time for. It's time for. Good and fuck around. Good and fuck around. I forgot I got this vaccine. It hurt my arm when I put my arm up like that. <laughs> Episode That's fuckery there. Yes, it is. Episode 45. Good and fuckery. Once I get my arm back. Oh, the techno organic virus they put in me to beat the COVID is... It's kicking in. Anyway, yeah, good and fuckery, episode 45. Let's start it off. All right. I'm going to start it off with my song of the week or whatever. Song of the week, um, AZ. Y'all might remember him from the classic Nas song, Life's a Bitch, and from the Firm album. AZ put out uh, Do or Die 2, like about two weeks ago or whatever. He got the song with Rick Ross called never enough and they got this girl singing up there and if you can imagine the az with Nas song it got the ambiance and everything it, it, it's it's good grown Firm man. Biz. Got, yeah they got the girl singing up there you know what i'm saying i can't sing but she's singing her tail off on the hook all we're missing is nature doing whatever it is that nature used to do for the firm mm-hmm <laughs> Forever and remember, forever is never enough. That's what the girls sang up there. Forever is never enough. Never enough. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. Freestyle of the week. J. Cole freestyle to pipe down. Whatever. I don't know if y'all heard it, but pipe down is a song off a of, um off a of, uh, Drake's CLB album. But I haven't heard this freestyle. Yeah, it just came out last week. Um, I think it was to kick out the off-season tour, pretty much. And it was good. He went in. Like, Since they're going to flag it like, anyway, I might just start off our live show this week with that. Just so I yeah, can I mean, officially. J- I mean, J. Cole went in on that joke, man. And he went in so much that um, he, was, he started an off-season tour, I believe, in Miami. Mm-hmm. And Miami had a special surprise because Drake came out. Now, Drake came out. He came out. He did your favorite song off of CLB, Knife Talk with um with uh 21 Savage or whatever. Um yes, then I think he did shit. one more. He came out with um now later that uh with Lil Dirk, that song. Okay. Then he did Knife Talk. I love that song get, too. I, That's me and my son Jam right there. And then um, he did, um, you know, we so you, uh, I'm too sexy, that joke. You know, he got I hate that, that song. Right I've come to the conclusion. Mm. I mean, video. I love love the video. Hate the song. Mm. I like the beat. Like if I just listen to the beat all to itself, the beat kind of like. Mm, I was like, all right, yeah. It's just that I never liked that. I always thought that right said Fred song. I'm too sexy was corny. So that's probably why I don't really fuck with Agreed. it like that. Agreed. But in um in the J. Cole freestyle, he he actually brought up the subject of people saying he's bronze, he's number three compared to Kendrick and Drake, 
and this, that, and the third in the in the um in the rap. Ooh. So when Drake came up there, he was like, Hey, I know yo, do my brother, I know I don't want to make every time we on stage a sentimental moment, but earlier uh last week you brought out that pipe down freestyle or whatever, and I just want to address something. Now, you know they did it in dramatic fashion, so everybody's like, oh, shoot, are they about to go in right there and there? But it wasn't really like a diss. You know what I'm saying? But it did sound like confrontational, like, hey, I'm still shooting for y'all spots type. Mm -hmm. But it was more introspective on on J. Cole's side. He he seemed like he was more looking at himself Mm -hmm. like, hey, why... I'm not considered this and that, pretty much. But Drake, this is the cool part. Drake, hey Cole, said, you better hey. than Drake to me. I actually, I'm gonna tell you what Drake said. Drake, um, bro, everybody was like, "Hey, I know you put it up, but I want this to be clear. You are one of the greatest rappers that have ever touched a mic." Long as he admitted, it. all right. All right. In front of everybody. Oh, and I just thought that was... It. Look at that. We don't see that often in rap. Yeah. And, I mean, I I, I just thought that was cool. Well, like, respect to Drake for being honest about... I, I, I can respect that. Mm-hmm. Big man move. Yeah, and he was like... And then he was like, yo, it's way too many people in this world. And, and just way too many people here and in this world that already know that J. Cole is at the top of the pole. When it comes right. to pause, when it comes to lyrics, yeah, I'm surprised Face ain't started to gig him. Yeah, I know he <laughs> <laughs> do that shit every single time. But yeah, I just thought that was a cool moment or whatever. And uh, yeah, freestyle of the week. If y'all get a chance, J Cole pipe down. Oh shit, <laughs> pretty much. So, um, all right, uh, more good than fuckery this week there's a lot of big things that's happening i mean and it's to be expected because september just seems to be the start of a lot of things in general <clears throat> um first things up uh rihanna had a savage x fenty fashion show and it was a lot of stars out there erica badu performed that was glorious i believe buster performed there was a bunch of other people out there and um yeah um just want to put that out there that uh, Rihanna is doing great as one of the few black female bil- billionaires that we have out here right now. Um, pretty much. The next thing I got on the list, Dave Chappelle is uh, is making his own comedy club in his hometown of Yellow Springs, Ohio. Before you get into uh, that, can you go back to the last story one more time? The last story. Oh, okay. Uh, the last I was story, running to grab water, my people. Oh, I was just basically bigging up Rihanna for her um, Savage X Fish, um, Fenty fashion show or whatever. It was a lot of like big names out there. Erica Badu performed. Um, Busta okay. Rhymes performed. It was a lot Salute of the queen. Salute the queen. Salute the queen. Yeah. And I just want to big up because it's not that often you got you can celebrate a black female billionaire. This is this is very true. So damn show salute to that. Yeah. And let me borrow twenty dollars. <laughs> and the fuckery is, I don't think we'll have a Rihanna album anytime soon. Uh, she's way too busy. <laughs> she's way too busy. She, she might just have one money. in the cut. She may have one just in the cut, but mm. she making that money. Mm. She ain't thinking about singing shit. Uh, I wouldn't, unless you you know really want to. But hey, but um. Yeah, back to the other thing. Dave Chappelle, he's building a comedy club and his uh and restaurant in his hometown of Yellow Springs, Ohio, uh, stating that I'm not just trying to make a club, I'm trying to make a way. Uh, basically as a way and an outlet for, you know, up and coming comedians to put their get their fit, feet wet, if you will, pretty much. Um, so his um it looks like the Yellow Springs uh planning commission approved the plans like um september 15th so he's right on the way of getting that uh started here pretty much uh, respect um next thing on the list uh some black excellence for you it was funny that you brought up black women 
in STEM programs, um, pretty much, because uh, we got two black women, uh, the first black women to be inducted into the National in, um, Inventors Hall of Fame and it's wow. nearly 50 year history. Um, wow, salute queen. Yeah, uh, it's two of them. Um, engineer, um, I hope I'm saying her name, Marion Croak and um, man, I don't know how to pronounce this. Her name is Pat uh, Patricia Bath, but her um, occupation is, is it Afla, ophthalmologist? She's an ophthalmologist? Ophthalmologist? Ophthalmologist or whatever. I have to look up what that is, pretty much. Uh, if I'm but, not mistaken, that's eyes. Eyes? Okay. Yeah. Okay. But, um, yep, yeah. they're going to be recognized in the 2022 um, National Inventors Hall of Fame. Nice. Much. Salute, uh, Queens. Let's yeah. go, Queen. Man, black folk taking over. And I don't mean that in a, like a subjective, like a way of like subjugation or nothing. I mean that more in the way of like we breaking down some barriers here lately. Like as much as mm -hmm. stuff is trying to like take us backwards, we're making some inroads here, man. Salute to the <clears throat> Queens, man. Yep. Yep. And yep. And they said it was like, um, what it was it? It was like forty-eight female inductees and thirty black inductees in the National wow. Inventor Hall of Fame. Wow. Big, but they big, will be the first black female. Right. Respect, Queen. Uh -huh. Respect. Keep, keep, keep blazing those trails, man, for us to to, to walk walk right behind you in them doors. I love it. Next thing, since since we brought it up also, and I just saw this earlier or whatever, um, Brothers Keeper is a, a Virginia Beach support group for men, provides outlets to talk out issues and seek mental health, um, mental health treatment. Um, Patrick Payton stood under a tent in the driveway of his brother-in-law's Green Run home and starting um, his new support network on this late August afternoon evening about 10 men gathered as they do each month to vent get advice and talk about the things that don't feel comfortable sharing with others big um, respect man he said I, he said I salute uh, the hell out of that man. <clears throat> yep well what he got me was he said that i'm a mechanic but it's not my passion um he's he's most happy when he's racing on a skateboard he said and wants to own a skate shop it would be for everyone but particularly minority skaters who are, and then, then freaking news break puts up a dang ad as I'm trying to read it or whatever. But um, of course, no, I, I don't, I'm, I get your newspaper anyway, news. I, I get your newspaper anyway. I don't need to sign up <laughs> pretty much. Um, dang, I, I don't need a false sale. Like every time I move this thing, it's another um, ad that pops up every time oh, I try okay. to move it. Yeah. But um, but yeah, he was saying when he was younger, he he was he, he was into skateboards or whatever, and that wasn't a usual thing for a black guy to be into skateboards or whatever. And he said he was always into it, but it was like pretty much like one of the back of mind type thing, pretty much. And I kind of relate to it on like my comic book kick, pretty much. So right on. Yeah, they. Brothers Keepers, they're located in Virginia Beach. If you're in the 757 area in Virginia, you know. Man, reach out to that. Hey, fellas, so. if you ain't got nobody else to unload, so there you go. Use that resource, man. Like, mm -hmm. don't end up like me, man. Unload on. Catch it before it gets too far. Yep. So, uh, next, um, just like you said, Tiz, black people are killing it. One, of those black people um curtis jackson 50 cent he <laughs> released the first episode of bmf black mafia family and it's being received very well i have I yet to, to i have yet to see it but he basically got big meat's son to play big meat which i think is also oh, great yeah i think that's also great and um 
just off of looking on social media, just everybody reaction or whatever, you know, it's everybody is in agreement. I haven't seen, you know, usually you'll see somebody to say, man, all right, what's up with this? What's up with this? But I only seen good things. The funniest thing that I seen was somebody said 50 Cent is trying to make a Marvel Cinematic Universe for drug dealers. That was hilarious. <laughs> that was That'd freaking be hilarious. Because, you know, he got he got BML, Power, Raising, uh, Kanan. He like, got his own, know. the Supreme Team from uh, Get Rich or Die Trying. Yeah, I mean, like, he's building something up here, man. Like, he, hey, man. Go ahead and let Majestic meet Ghost and then uh, meet. Plus, I just like, I just like seeing old rappers doing well. Cause in the past we've seen too many rappers doing the opposite. Like, you ain't never lying. Doing the you. opposite. Yo, I've seen favorite my some of my favorite rappers have regular jobs or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's a lot of them that end up like uh, <clears throat> Elvin from uh, the Cosby Show. Mm-hmm. That's um, recipe Sean Price. He straight up said, "Yeah, I was doing construction, and then I started going back into rapping again." So that's real. Yeah, may you rest in peace. But yeah, big ups to 50 Cent, um, BMF. I'm going to be watching it soon because everybody got got me sold pretty much. I never really was like into like, I never got into power because I just never had time to. I pretty much was always working whenever power was going on because I was working overnight. But I will say I like, it was like that power versus empire um, phase in TV. And I was a power person because Empire just seemed corny to me, pretty much. That's all for the I ain't never watched Power, I but I definitely need to finish that Wu-Tang saga and this BMF give me that type of vibe, so. I just started that, yo. I just started Wu-Tang. All right, to go on to the tangent, yo. Or whatever. And it's great that you brought that up because I'm going to go into something. I just watched Wu-Tang. Um, like, the, I'm just now starting the first season for the first time. And I am tripping out so bad that Raekwon and Ghostface literally wanted to kill each other. And I'm thinking they like best of friends, cousins, like related. Like, I'm like, yo, and I'm sitting here. The only thing I want to see now is so when did these niggas get cool? Right. When did these niggas get cool? But I do remember. The, the show gave me a lot more perspective of how far they were, because I do remember RZA on Breakfast Club talking about talking about the show and how they literally wanted to kill each other or whatever. But man, that show kind of given me a lot more respect for Raekwon and, and Ghostface just in in general like it makes me like want to listen to all their stuff now and just be like it, it became more real to me pretty mm-hmm. much i understand but, i definitely get that vibe from that show but i'm pretty far in so i ain't gonna ruin it for you but no nah, no nah. i mean technically we get through I season one we're gonna have to talk I technically i already know what happens but i don't mm-hmm. you know know exactly i don't know how I know the end result, but I don't know none of this journey because I'm learning so much. In between. And then it it tripped me out. Like, I knew um, Method Man, you know, that's my, like, favorite rapper, period, anyway. But, like, I knew Method Man, like, uh, nickname was Shotgun or whatever, but I still wasn't used to people just calling him Shotgun. It wasn't after a while that I realized, oh, that tall nigga is David, yeah. Davies kind of looked like extra light skin Method Man in mm-hmm. the face. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I actually yeah. thought Davies and, uh, has done a good job in that show. Yeah, and I mean, like, I'm, yeah, I'm happy I get to hear verses from Method Man I ain't never heard before. Whatever. And, yeah. and his story kind of explains Method Man and how he acts to me. Like, Method Man and how he, like, Method Man still kind of has that. He's 50 years old, but he's still got that, like, I don't want to say childish, but that youthful energy to him. And how he grew up kind of, like, explained it. But it's funny we got into a tangent about the Wu-Tang show because 
Ghostface Killer is coming out with Supreme Clientele 2, and Kanye West and Mike Dean is executive producers. That ought to be interesting. That would be interesting. Interesting. That's an interesting sound for him to rap on. I, I think it would fit because Kanye West has stated before that he's made beats and they were designated for Ghostface, but they were given to somebody else. Like I think he, I think, oh yeah, Blueprint, Song Cry, that was for Ghostface. Like a lot of the um, lot of the beats that was on Blueprint, the all the soulful stuff, that was really originally for Ghostface. So. It's going to be interesting to see what happens, pretty much. Indeed. What up? And then um, Snoop Dogg announced today that he's going to have a new album called Algorithm. And uh, we never know what to expect of Snoop, pretty much. Uh, but, yeah, and nothing else new out of it. He just announced it today, so I don't have any other information off of that, pretty much. Whatever. Um, damn. My light went out. <laughs> oh, um, okay. And it's funny. Y'all brought up Pusha T too, because um he's back with the Neptunes and he's about to come out with another album soon. So yeah, y'all get to like go ahead and back all the shit y'all just said earlier. Let's go, Pretty Push. Much. Oh well. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I don't fuck um, with your buddy. <laughs> I don't think it's that don't got shit to do with your butt. Nothing. He makes it's it's just so funny to have some good shots, interviews from time to time. We're gonna have to have an episode where we talk about what has Joe Button done to you. What? That's past. I just don't like his music. That's like, man, this nigga beef back in the day over a bitch or something. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna cut that out. I've been a woman. I'm, I'm sorry. Look, man. Beds and late right. nights don't work well. For I'm me. surprised I ain't fell asleep, my damn stuff. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think the problem with Joe Budden music is most of it wasn't mastered and mixed right. So that was probably one of the main reasons and stuff. Hold on, what you talk? What were we talking about though? Um, we were actually talking about Pusha T coming out with a new album with the net. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Um. Leaning more on the fuckery side. Um, Jill Scott was on this. Um, she was on this podcast, I think, with Jamil Hill. And mm-hmm. she's actually considering leaving America and moving to Holland. Oh, because okay. mm-hmm. just because she has more, she has with her 10 year old son now. And well, I think he's actually older than 10 or whatever. I think he's like 12 years old. But he's actually talking about driving, and as a mother, she's like in fear of like her black child out there, the way the world is, police uh-huh. and everything. I can understand. And, and she said that it's certain things that we shouldn't have to worry about, and in certain countries, we don't have to worry about them. So she's done her research, and she's actually thinking about moving to Holland or whatever. She just says that it's it's a lot it's a lot more freer or whatever as far as like people do what they want to do and it doesn't impede on other people pretty much. So that's real. That's that's or whatever. A thing. Everybody like pretty much keep to themselves or whatever. They do their own thing. Um and it goes along with a lot of people that I've seen, a black people that I've known that's gone out of out of the country or whatever and come back and like tell me, yo, oh, they love us out there. Don't let the media fool you. I like my home. That is area. true. Everywhere I've been out of the country, and mind you, I've only been to two, to three places out of the mainland country, two places that are actually out of US jurisdiction. And that's Jamaica, Mexico, and uh, Puerto Rico. But what I can tell you, there seems to be a genuine, like, they fuck with us. Mm -hmm. They don't like our government that much. But us as people, they are. I've come to the conclusion that I think 
I think um, people outside of the country, if they like black people, is because they hate America and we're like the first line of defense when calling out America on their bullshit. Well, that's that thing that might be, I think that might be part of it. I ain't gonna say that's I'll the only it. thing. Hey man, I don't think as much hate as our people have experienced. Anytime you telling me it's like involved and it ain't oh they're killing us or they hate us or I'll take it. I'll t- I'll take being that defense and that's that's fine with me. But um, yeah, people, I'm about to Go wrap us. this all up. Because the meds is kicking in, and as I told you, I just got vaxxed tonight. So we're gonna stop the fuckery. We're gonna stop the fuckery off with one main fuckery, or whatever. I ain't put it even up there on the docket, but one main fuckery. R. Kelly is convicted. He is man about that time. He is out of here. Like he's yeah. My thing, my thing with this R. Kelly shit. They tried to make this like the the trial of the century or some shit, man. This nigga was a perv. You put him in jail. Okay. Yeah. Lock this motherfucker up and just and just do his ass like you do every other pervert. Forget about his ass. Lock him up and let him let him punish whatever they're gonna punish. Put him like fuck fuck him. Shit. They do we they do that because they don't got no and we, fuck we the people that was outside of the courtroom sitting there protesting his his guilty verdict. Mm-hmm. I said it. I don't care what you think of me. I mean not. I will uh, I will say fuck you with his dick. I said I will say in the defense yeah. of the people that have brought it up, they was bringing up that um a lot of the charges that he got were uh, some of the charges were like trumped up charges like racketeering and stuff like that. But now I will hear time, that I, because that you can't have racketeering and only one damn person get convicted or something exactly. like not yeah. a definition of racketeering, it means it was a group effort. Mm-hmm. So you gotta let but, the enterprise get convicted too. You can't just have a criminal. But uh, yeah. in order the rest of that for, shit. I mean, and and people can say, yeah, they they stacked it up there or whatever. And they man, they charged them with Rico so they could people. actually present the evidence that they needed to get them on the other counts, man. And what mm-hmm. we ain't about to do is use a technicality to try to keep excusing for like. Man, yo, everybody that grew I, up in my era, we seen the tape. Let's stop fucking around with this dumb shit. That's what I was People. saying. I was saying, when you get to a yo, point, shit. all right, that's cool if, if the person is not guilty. Bring that stuff up when they're not guilty or whatever. But when you doing dirt, come on, bro. When, when you doing dirt, you can't really be mad when the system is doing dirt against you because you you if you won't doing dirt you wouldn't even be put in that position. He's like, sick. Like R like R Kelly, you were in a position to keep yourself away from trouble. Period. Period or whatever. You he's sick. And yeah, you could say he's sick all you want, but man, you got. Why are we even like? Look, man, that nigga guilty. It's 20 years. I'm glad they convicted him. Good yeah. riddance, motherfucker. I yeah, don't have no sympathy ready. for you. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about you writing step in the name of love. I don't give a fuck about none of that. I'm good. I, I, I'm I was, done, man. When, when I was young, I always felt uncomfortable when R. Kelly was playing anyway. Because I'm like, yo, mind you, when he came out, it was 93. I was 10 freaking years old and I'm in 10 years old at a cookout. And this man is basically just saying out loud, I'm having sex pretty much. I, I'm not supposed to be hearing that at 10. I'm 10 years old and I know I ain't supposed to be hearing that at 10 or whatever. He just always seemed like a creep to me. Mind you. Hey, I hate to it. I hate to admit it. And I know a lot of people hate to admit it. He made some great songs, but Man, there's been a lot of crazy people that make great music, great art, or whatever. Uh, yeah. And yeah, and he like, he all that stuff. Good with riddance, all that to bad stuff rubbish going on. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, so have eclectic so, art, but I'm glad that motherfucker is locked up. 
Indeed. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, this is episode 45. Oh, and you ain't cover it. But just want to say, man, let's stop uh, jumping to conclusions just because somebody's um, family member say something. I don't know what the hell going on in this uh, Kelly Price situation. But if mm-hmm. Kelly Price has said that she all right and that she just needs some time because she's sick with COVID, let that woman rest. Yeah. I, that that I should be case closed. Up. We got it. All right. We done. Leave it alone. That's all mm-hmm. I wanted to say. I don't know what that got to do with nothing, but. I wasn't sure. Boy, about yo, this story, social so media shit, man. We be way too thirsty for a story. Like the lady said she got COVID and that was all that's wrong. <laughs> so let's leave it alone. Let that family I, figure their own shit out. I, I didn't bring it up because I wasn't sure about the story. And like you said, you know, social media, they be so big on stories or whatever. I don't know that, about all the stories, but I know I heard out of Kelly Price's own mouth that she had COVID. <clears throat> That's why she ain't want nobody around. Her and her sister uh-huh. are not close. So uh, she don't know what the sister talking about, but that's pretty much sister it. Want- so if people can just from 15 that, minutes of fame. Let that ride. So that's I'm a I, hey man. When in doubt, I'm gonna roll with the person who actually going through it. You said that that's mm-hmm. what's going on, then damn it. All right. I don't got no reason to believe you lying because I don't know you. So leave that lady alone, True. y'all. Leave her family mm-hmm. alone. Stop trying to be thirsty for a story out here. Social media peoples and bloggers and all that shit. Like, you know. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't sure about the story. I thought it was like a running gag or something like that because by the time I got to it, it was an open and shut case. So I didn't bring it up. And I ain't want to just be one of those people that just bring a story along and I ain't know nothing about it. I'm not mad. Even though I'm pretty sure I've done that before. It's but okay. I ain't want to continue. I understand. But I've heard enough about the story to pretty much get it. Mm-hmm. Leave that family alone. Let's stop being nosy, y'all. Yeah, mind your business. Mind your business. Mind your business. And, well, speaking of business, whatever. I want to bring this up. Hey, I got my archery hoodie, y'all. Look, 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 look. I got it. Yeah. Damn. 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 AC eighty-three. And we just put we just put two more um two new shirts on 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 the site too um y'all can check them out um every week we're doing at least two designs going up on the on the site um the site is rtreclothing dot com once again it's rtreclothing dot com a r t r e clothing dot com come check us out man new stuff uh, we got the R Trade Clothing stuff. We got the partners merchandise. We're also come always coming out with new partners merchandise as well. We're coming out with new designs every week. Come check us out, man. So if you want your merch, your partners merch, your AC eighty three clothing, um, one stop shop, R Trade Clothing dot com. Um, if you want to donate or support financially in any other way. Feel free to go ahead and check us out on buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners or patreon.com backslash the partners where on buy me a coffee, you can donate for as little as a dollar. And on both sites, you can actually become a member for as little as $5 where you get exclusive content, unedited episodes, stuff that has been deleted from YouTube due to copyright and uh, other restrictions. Um, you get all of the good, bad, and ugly of the partners. You get access to our Discord, members-only events, special pod squad promo codes for rtreclothing.com, et cetera, et cetera. You want to be connected. You want to be a member. You want to be down with the pod squad on a whole nother level. Go ahead to buymeacoffee.com or patreon.com and become a member for as little as $5 or buy me a, the coffee at doc, buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners to donate for as little as a dollar. If you want to donate a little easier, you can always donate via cash app at dollar sign partner tiz one. That's dollar sign P-O-D-N-A-T-I-Z one. Um, and yeah, man, if you want to get in touch with us for non-financial reasons, how can they do that, Pat? Um, yeah, all our social medias 
at T H E P O D N A S. That's TikTok. That's Twitter. That is that's Instagram. That's Facebook. Also with Facebook, we have Tiz Face Pat are the partners. So we got two page Facebooks, but you can put t- the partners in the search and you will find us. Hey, come if you got any questions, any comments, uh, any suggestions for our live show. Yes. Um, and want to vote on the on the basically on the MC bracket that we have or whatever. There's there, especially I believe he um Tiz got it um up there on Twitter too. So Indeed. yep at T H E P O D N A S. You'll find us. That's it, man. Check us out everywhere, man. And if all of that was way too much for you to remember, like what was that? Where do I get the clothes? How do I get the membership? Who donating yeah. where? Don't worry about it. We got you. Just go to thepodnas.com. That's T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S dot com. T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S dot com. All of the information is there. Check out our episodes weekly there. You can check out it. You can get easy access to the live streams. Um, Yeah, man. Thepodnas.com is where it's at. Check us out there. Everything is there. Go there right now. Um, in the meantime, if you want to support on the easiest way possible, I got you. Just like this, share this with people, and yeah. subscribe if you haven't yet, if you're new, so that you don't miss any of our weekly content. Otherwise, it's, like it's been a pleasure, guys. Um, if you need help, if you're going through stuff and you don't know where to turn, and you just need some guidance or somebody to listen for a second, hit us up, the partners podcast at gmail.com. I'm going through stuff as well, guys. So let's go through it together. I got you back because I might need to help my damn self. Um, in the meantime, I've been your boy, Tiz, one third of the partners. And I have been along with the other third of the partners. Bax Pat Awan. <laughs> what? Baxed Pat. Oh, I was like backpack. I was like, what is not that? Not backpack. Backpack Awan. Not backpack Pat. Not backpack, backpack Awan. Fat Pat Awan. <laughs> Rattata. <laughs> All right. Rattata. 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 Big peace out. Once again, like, comment, share. Like, comment, share. Thank y'all for tuning in. We love y'all. Love y'all, man. Thank y'all for joining us another week. Peace.